We should do that. We were, guys, way, we, we were just talking. We should do a. Uh, we should do the behind the Patreon wall. The what we say before we roll. <laughs> that would be every. We would make a hundred thousand. We would make more money. Than yeah, and lose Bobby. every friend I've ever had. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's juicy gossip, guys. It's ju- it's goss, a pretty hot juicy goss, goss. You guys. Um, Bianca. Hi. Tell me about your week, Kenny. Did you realize that you're gonna have to do this segment and prepare? I thought of one thing. Uh huh. It was hella scary. Are you ready? Yeah. So I'm off to an adventure. I'm in an Uber. I have right. to sit in the front seat for some reason. And my two friends are in the back. And we're at a, we're, we like pull off from a, a light and we're driving. And a, a guy comes up to us in the middle of the street. So we're not at a light. We're just driving. And uh, someone is turning left in front of us. So our lane slowed down. His lane to the right of us, open. He comes up, pulls up right next to the car. So I'm in the passenger seat. This person's in their driver's seat. This is like, I. it's like there used to be a thing called you make the call on uh, football <laughs> games or baseball games. They would do like a guy would slide in. Right. They'd show the play and they'd go, you make the call. What happened? And then they'd run a commercial and then come in and go like, oh. he was out or whatever. Okay, now so I'm going to go like, did okay, he take make- his dick out? Did he spit? Did he say something racist? Uh, or did he puke? None. I don't think he puked. Okay. So. I don't. Now you just said no. I said so none, but yeah. can you get a little more extreme? Than puking? I don't think so. <laughs> um, there's a better one of those, Well, There's a better. It's like, that's the old one. That's the old There's like, like a dragnetti. stab one. Um. um we like to do our production meetings on the air. <laughs> uh, more extreme okay, than gonna... taking his dick out? Dude, it was so scary. So he pulls up to the passenger side. He's like this. I have to show you. Both arms out with a long lens DSLR camera taking a photo of me. Like, not... like. He took both hands off the steering wheel and was like halfway out of the car. Is and was, the is his car moving? No, stopped. Okay. Pulls up, stops, and comes up. But as soon as he pulled up, kind of, I looked to the right, both hands on the camera, long lens, taking a photo. Is this about the Guardian article that we were featured in? I'm like, S- I, stop it. That Sprite commercial was what? four years ago. Uh <laughs> I, this is a this is how uh, passionate the feelers are. <laughs> Just joking. No, it was so scary. Why do you know why? How, no, of course I don't know why. I I do you not, think it was like some jerk all, off thought, shit, or do you think he thought well, I'm sitting in like something famous happened? There's no way he could think something famous happened. I mean, there was an Uber sticker on the back. Look, I'm as famous as anyone <laughs> in the country, and I ride Ubers all the time. <laughs> I mean, you know, when there's a famous person, they don't go one lone ranger going to chase. Like, they, there's hubs that famous I bet if them. there's a scandal, they do. Yeah, but it's me. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. What, do I, what don't I know? <laughs> and Neil, I thought, first of all, I thought it was a gun. Yeah. And it was night. And that's, by the way, that's a West Hollywood. That's a West Hollywood drive-by. <laughs> Like freeze, motherfucker! <laughs> pew, 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 pew. Oh no, no. Ricky! No, I don't have my glasses on. Um, and then I, I got very, I just got very freaked out. I was so scared. And then he peels out. What was that about? Don't know. I mean, you, 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 fame's terrifying. Part of me. <laughs> no, I'm fame. It, but I, but that's Neil, this has nothing to do with. I, fame. I know it doesn't. But that's a tenth of what. Like you'd see the Amy Winehouse documentary, yeah. and it just is a fucking nightmare. Like, oh, this is a nightmare. It was so scary. And then I thought, I was like, I'm being, pr- like, I'm being sex trafficked. And then, my, then my, we made jokes how, like, oh, they probably want him a little younger. But uh, I don't know what that was. But it, I know it was really under. Was he Middle Eastern? Person, Black? No, white. it was a camera face. Got I had it. no idea. But I'm telling you, 
He knew what camera he was face doing. like what I have when I'm on camera. <laughs> work, work the runway, girl. <sighs> uh, I just he felt like he knew exactly why he was doing it. Part of me. Then I took an inventory of the car, the nice Chinese gentleman driving. I was like, Are you in an insurance scam? Like, are you? Yeah. Do you have an insurance claim out? I asked my friends. I don't know why else someone would follow. It was so scary. They he I don't I I mean why I can't even comment because I don't understand it I it just someone pulled up but why would you be so he kept taking photos and I put my bag up to my face and then he kept taking photos so in the uh, old days in New York when at the Puerto Rican Day Parade dudes would videotape hot women and it was so pitiful <laughs> like what do you mean like, like as they were just dancing? girls on the street dudes would film them. <laughs> And it was like, dog, like, so what bad. are you going to do with it? Right. Like, I jerk off in the winter. You'll be able to get porn in the winter. Like, right. you're not like, but I want to remember these times <laughs> in Central Park when Hose was wearing jeans. Like, okay. <laughs> um, the, uh, that's, um, that's wild. I'm sorry that that happened to you. No, it was, it was really weird. It reminded me of a time, this very weird thing happened to me n near there at a Goodwill where I'm pretty sure... I was almost serial killed. Mm -hmm. um, I was in a Goodwill looking for some costume. Me and my friend, who's a guy, came together, and I was like, "Okay, I gotta go this way. I'm gonna. It'll. I'll be a while." And everywhere I was, there was this one dude, but mm -hmm. he never ever looked at me. He never even looked towards me. Um, but I just started noticing him. For some, I don't know, he just gave me the creeps a little bit. So I, I wanted to see if I was being a little paranoid. And I started going to really very, very strange places that no one goes to in Goodwill. And The he bad would, neighborhoods of Goodwill. <laughs> like the blankets. The hood, the hoodwill. <laughs> I used to went to the blankets, like no one's buying No one's blankets. fucking blank. Like yeah. the blankets of Goodwill, Neil, can you believe that? And it's so, one of my favorite Instagram accounts. Go blankets ahead. Blankets of <laughs> Keep, 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 going. don't lose okay, it. The blankets so you went to blankets. So I went to blankets. And at Where that point, you'd be safe. Cause the last thing of the only thing that could kill you in goodwill is a fucking blanket. <laughs> Unless you went over like, I, then I hid in the knives. <laughs> oh, that <laughs> he'll never get you now. Anyways, I went to the blankets. I'm like, okay, he's for sure not. I'm playing dumb the whole time. And I turn around and there was, it's next to the chair furniture and he's, he was just right there mm -hmm. and I was so terrified. So I texted yeah. my friend, I'm like, we got to get the fuck out of here. Someone's following me. And my friend, eye roll emojis, like, no one's following you, bitch. It's Goodwill. Um, and I said, can you actually come meet me in the blankets and just be very boisterous? Of like, just say, hey, babe, there you are. You're something. And he did that. And that guy got up and ran out. Like ran, but just briskly walked out straight away. Great. Yeah. I like it. I was a goner. I'd be doing this podcast by myself, <laughs> getting all the money. Do you understand me? Neil, Will does I need it for your protection, free. Neil. It does it for free. What did I do? Great question. <laughs> I was a lot of Zooms this week, gang. These <laughs> okay. bank commercials aren't going to cast themselves. They're mm. not going to storyboard themselves. They're not going to locations got themselves. They're not. Do you gonna... do all that? Why are you doing all that? Because you have to. You have to? Is there someone that can do that? No. I can't allow... I mean, I've heard like Louie would let people pick locations for him. No. Like, and look at photos, but he wouldn't go on. I think if you get to a certain level, I don't think... You do have to go to the tech scout. Because you can't... I can't film something unless I know what it looks like. Right. Unless I've been there, I'm not just going to be like... I don't, it's yeah, hard no to one's make imagination plans. is that good. I it's, I also feel like a piece of shit going like, hey, we'll figure it out. We've got 80 people that need you to figure it out now. <laughs> Man, I'm not ready. Right. Um. So a lot of that. And um, what's the least favorite part about the pre-production? Location scouting. That seems like it'd be nice. You get a lunch. You well, I to actually, get a lunch. it's a good point. Good point about lunch because I get my sweet green salad uh, every time I do a location scout, right? But mm -hmm. the crew got Mendocino Farms. Now, mm. anyone who Yummy. really is a Tuesday feeler of the highest level knows that Mendocino Farms is one of my top toppies. That's very good. So I got a free salad and a free sandwich. Would you, would you get the vegan balmy? Yeah. 
I knew it. No cilantro, no cucumber. Thanks. What's up with cilantro? Cilantro's not doesn't. I'm oh, are you a super taster? Yeah. yeah. Um. Weird. So I'm a Tuesday taster. <laughs> Tuesday. Um. So uh. So that's the worst part because you I need to drive to fucking Simi Valley. To go like this is the mall. You're offending all the police officers. Well, I, that listen I did to the say, podcast. I did say um, that uh, the, I used a black DP, uh, Malik Saeed, who's the who, who shot, shot all of Spike Lee's movies, and I've like been kind of a low key hero of mine forever, or not a hero, but I fuck with him. Um, and uh, but so we're in Simi Valley. I go, you know, if you need justice, this is the place to get it. <laughs> <laughs> Malik said some really f- cool shit. He was talking about the, how degraded culture has gotten. And he was saying, he goes, he's like probably 50 or something. He like was a fucking, I don't think he was lead cameraman on Malcolm X. Like fucking, wow. he's like a fucking, you know. And uh, he's like, man, I gr- when I grew up in LA, he's like, there was fucking all stars everywhere. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, just fucking dudes doing backflips and <laughs> the best looking women. And right. like, I just love people that see culture that way. He didn't go to college. He just bought a camera and filmed shit. And like, what is he saying now? He's like, now it's just like, everything's online. Everything's online. And there's no, lo- you needed a low, you needed local all stars because you didn't have access to international all stars. Mm. So you needed like, it's like people could sing. <laughs> people would like, there was sh- cool. Um, anyhow, uh, and I, I, you know, I like plant medicine. I've heard. I sat with some plant medicine this week and uh, it was pretty fantastic. Yeah. And uh, this is how much ayahuasca has changed me as a person. Driving home the other night near here. See a guy crosswalk on Ocean Park Boulevard, which near me, and uh, and he was in wheelchair, and it's like uphill. So I just parked, and I was like, "Hey, man, you need help?" And uh, he did, and I pushed him up the hill for like ten minutes. Oh, that's nice. That is, <laughs> that is nice. That's we have really nice. we have songs that we have to go over, by the way. Yes. Um and. Didn't once think about getting good boy Catholic points. Did you give him some money? No. Hmm. He offered, he was going to buy me, I was supposed to meet him at El Pollo Loco on Thursday. What? Is you joking? No. You made a date with him? Well, he made a date with me. I didn't, I wasn't like, I wasn't like, yes, I'll, it's a deal. What did he say? Hey. Well, here's the great thing. <laughs> here's the great thing about homeless Sorry. people is, or uh, home home without home houseless houseless sans accommodation sans adobe uh he he i was pushing him in like the bike lane and at one point i'm like yeah let's go to the sidewalk and he goes don't be a fucking idiot keep me in the bike lane (laughs) i'm like okay he called you an idiot yeah he was just drunk and mentally ill like um but didn't get didn't think about good boy points only am saying it now so that people understand what this plant is all about. Uh, okay. I mean, it's a good, it's a good one, Neil. But it's also like I, it, it I was surprised by how not like grossed out, not, mm. eh, not I was. It was just like, yeah, if I can help the guy. Wait, focus. How did how what, how did the date come about? Because he said he was getting fifty thousand dollars the next day. And he was. That he was no. He also said he owned real. I mean, he just it's, okay, he yeah, just yeah. had a bunch of things. He was so. What did he say? He said, "I'm I'll um, I'll be at Pollo Loco tomorrow to come spend by. My I'll earnings. buy you a taco. <laughs> okay, at eleven. Oh. Did you go? No, because I don't. They don't have any. Actually, they might have vegan options now. They do. They have an maybe they have an uh, impossible. They have a. I think they have a sofrito. Sofrito, and that's that's um. Chipotle. Chipotle and shout out to them for having a bucket of tofu. <laughs> they're the only good? they're it's fucking very good. Really? So Fritas at Chipotle, get them. Very good. Do you eat the tacos at Jack in a Box? Apparently that's Never not bacon. Never done it. Uh, that's what that's I was thinking. Beyond. They have Beyond. Beyond. Yeah. El Pollo, I don't know what they have, but 
I tell you what, I left eleven dollars worth of merch on the table by not showing up. Um, we got a bunch of songs. Okay, let's play. <laughs> the people made us some songs. Great. It's an old. That's an old segment. Yeah. Song. Just another one of these old man phrases. I love the clarinet. The beat is. I the, love the Dixie. I uh, love the clarinet. I like the music. We, you got to replace the vocals. the vocals. Who did that? Oh, Sean, Cantrowitz. Sean Cantrowitz. Love your spirit. Can, it needs to be just hire like, somebody, or just or just like oh, the the old man, man phrases. phrases. Like Something. you, he, you either have the wrong voice or you have the wrong pitch right now. Yeah. So spend money on a barbershop quartet and really do it right. Um. Two more years. All right. Okay. That oh, sounds like the beginning of a Kanye song from the mixtape when he was releasing the Friday, the Good Music Friday mm-hmm. mixtapes. There's a song with Most Def and Ronnie Isley and Ronnie um, and uh, Swiss Beats. That's the be- that sounds like the beginning of that. I like it a lot. It's also a, it's a sample. Did um, you did you watch the? Earth, Wind, Fire versus the I didn't. Brothers. We'll get to that. Okay. I've really? seen the outfits. They're so okay. Yeah, we'll, we please can. We yeah, that's a good one because the kid says Mant. Yeah, like Mans, phrases. Meals, old man phrases. Great winner. Yeah, perfect. That's what Sean Canterwood should yeah, have done. It's just old timey voice. Yeah, we're bringing you backstage, guys. BTS. <laughs> All right. We got a number of Attaboy Birds and Good One Neils. Come on, come on, come on. Good One Neil, Sean Cantrus. Good One Neil. Too long. Good One Neil. How'd you get it? How'd you know? Good One Neil. How'd you get it? How'd you know? Good One Neil. How'd you get it? How'd you know? That's great. Good One Neil. Great. A lot of neighborhoods. You could just use the tag. Get, 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 get how'd you get it? Know. How'd you know? How'd you get it? How'd you not, know? That's there's nothing I don't like about it. How'd you get it? How'd you know? <laughs> uh, great. At a boy, Bert. 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 Great. So. At a boy, Bert. The problem with At a boy, Bert is you don't really need At a boy, Bert's and good one, Neil. You, it's kind of a either or situation. Yeah, well, you could just options. Yeah, for we'll see. I tell boy bird. We'll go, go with God on that <laughs> one. Boy bird, it's so good. Uh, then two bings gonna apologize. Oh come on. Oh, wow. Bing's gonna apologize. Pretty good. Yes, that's pretty good. Really good. Eric AJ. Johnson, good shit. Yeah. Say sorry. Say sorry. Sorry. That's Hong Kong Jimmy. Wait, can you believe that? Okay. Biggie. Biggie. <laughs> Yeah. Say sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Say sorry. Sorry. That's so funny. Nice. It sounds almost like South Park. Thank you. It's Say that's a really sorry. Hong Kong Jimmy comes Hong through. Hong Kong. I, I like you and Hong Kong Jimmy. You're so funny. As a relationship, I just like it. Thank you. <laughs> it's too good. That's thank you. Let's go over the you names guys, again. Thank you, everybody. Sean Cantrowitz. Just show me. Yeah. Sean Cantrowitz. Uh, Fog Labs. At a boy, but. Uh, Eric Johnson. Bink's going to apologize. Hong Kong Jim. James AC. Bink's going to. Binky. Um, <laughs> Neil's Old Man Phrases. Justin Smith was too. I don't know who did what, but. Uh, Justin Smith. Kaneji Sasaki. And Benjamin Greenspan. 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 Great. Great. Oh, shit. Uh, shit. We don't know when uh, we're going full music on it. Uh, uh, thank you. You guys, you guys make the so show what funny. it is. That's so funny. Um, it's also, I'm so surprised by how good quality everything is. You can make, anyone can make good music now. If they have, if they have a modicum of talent and 800 bucks. The thing, the way it's like your phone has more processing power than the mm. NASA yeah, did in 1970. That, have you seen that phone, that photo where a guy is holding all this technology and every 
and the caption is oh, your phone can do all this yeah. now. Yeah. Um the it's that's me there's more processing power on Will's computer than there was in anything Michael Jackson ever used. Yeah. Like thriller like it's all knobs. <laughs> Like literally like hard knobs and like tape. Yeah, I thought I, I read something that the way they edited music was literally. Yeah. When I, by it. the way, when I went to NYU, this is how old I am, is we used to cut on tape. Are you serious? Yeah, that's why these phones are fucking, I'll edit anything on my phone because I'm like, yeah. this is a miracle. Yeah. It's a miracle. <laughs> I used to have to go to, there were three rooms. Mm. You had to rent it out. Like you had to sign in and fucking I'll tomorrow at three and then you'd run the tape over literally a razor blade. Then you'd have to loop it, play it back like the Bee Gees documentary where they loop the where they loop the uh, staying alive. Beat. Mm. That's that's the world I'm from. <laughs> Damn. Play one of his old man. Songs. Old man phrases. Beautiful. Um, it's already a hit, guys. Now, now that we're 79 minutes into the podcast. <laughs> I guess we should start. Po- now we've done a lot of bookkeeping. Maybe I cut out the wheelchair thing because I don't want it to seem self-aggrandizing. It doesn't okay. at all. I actually all right. think it's lovely. Okay. Because I just. It literally doesn't come across like you. Okay. At all. Because I don't. It, what, that's my point is like. No, it's no, not no. even a. I'm. I'm talking. I'm like talking about it like I'm another person. Like oddly enough, the the wheelchair story for me just sounded like, like of human interaction, not yeah. like a. You guys, I did a no. thing. Like not. A, That's what is remarkable to me. Yeah. You good. You good, Neil. Great. Now speaking of, <laughs> I don't even know George Floyd. Okay. Have you watched much of it? Yes. You don't find it unbearable? Well, I didn't say anything yet. Okay. Uh, I watched, there's a channel on Cord, that you named Cord, which is my bad cable, my oh, off-brand fuck. cable. Just, I'll just pay. I'll give you some money. I no, know. stop. <laughs> I like it. Okay. Uh, and there's a channel that, they, it's almost like a new version of Court TV. One of them, they have a channel that's just a surveillance footage of Goodwill, right? <laughs> Anyhow, go. That's what I good, was almost that's, serial that's killed. That's what Neil. programming is to me. It's just cl- it's just closed circuit television. <laughs> <laughs> so they have a channel called Law and something, and they just play. Uh, they just have yeah. court proceedings. Yep. So the the trials on that. I watch for five minutes and then I'm over- overwhelmed with emotion and then I can't watch. Anymore. Yeah, I don't. I haven't been able to watch. I'm just going by headlines. Yeah. That's I, the only thing I'm like, good clickbait. I like it. Yeah. Tell me what happened. What I'll say is everything I hear is no one's on his side. He got nobody. Like, no, I don't think he was well liked to begin with. And then they're all like, what the fuck were you? The, all the co- I've never seen a bureaucracy turn on somebody like this. Mm. It was almost like it's an internal affairs investigation yeah. or something. It where, feels like we're not supposed to be watching it almost yeah like they're not i mean it makes them look good in as a municipality like yeah. that they seem like there's just people it's weird that them agreeing that this was wrong makes us feel uh positive in a small way like wow they're really coming this together is, and say, you know that we i agree on reality with a police officer it's so it, it just reminds me of being in a relationship with someone who cannot take responsibility mm-hmm. and when they do for a small thing you're like you gotta suck yes. a dick <laughs> you gotta suck look it. we've all been there bianca <laughs> no it's oh stopping. my god i forgot to tell you <laughs> what? speaking cat, of cat i don't even know what to call her cat in terms of the relationship to the show but she was on cat's a commercial director was on set directing a commercial mm-hmm. they asked her they're like the client doesn't want that and she said over the walkie talkie that was open so everyone could hear it she goes the client can suck my dick from the back oh as a tribute to you cat you suck my dick and choke on it cat, you- she's always been my girl she, she got me a, a she body brought, scrubber she got it got bianca a present today this that's is, why we're starting the niceness. cat gift box it's a monthly fee where <laughs> cat will 
products cat really uses in the wild. Um, yeah, it's so sweet. But also, what the fuck happened? <laughs> they all laughed. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Um, she got fired, but they laughed. No, I'm good. <laughs> um, she, it was fun. Um, yeah, so uh, I can't believe the amount of people that are against the guy. And uh, no, I it's, now here's the you, well, here's the thought I had. Just why they're gonna have to pay all those bystanders, meaning they could all sue, they'll all sue for emotional distress, mm. and it's at the hands of the that same police department. I, I don't think that that's their plan. They I don't like think that any, I mean, they're exhausted. all underage and shit, like yeah. they're all young people, so they can, and they, by the way, seemed I don't think any of them were faking. From what I can tell. No. Um, so they're going to have to pay them. Good. Um, now, did you hear the the operator? You know how there was like an operator who saw it? Uh, the, the EMT or the yeah, operator? Like the fi- okay. She was with the fire the, department. She was somehow. a white yeah. woman? Yeah. And she said, hey, I can administer. Yes. And they were like, no. Yes, I remember her. But she actually said when she called them, she says something to the effect of like, I don't know if I'm a snitch or what, but that's she's where so like funny. the Karen shit happens. Well, that's yeah. where like what? So she's not a Karen. No. If okay, Who's if calling someone her Karen? no. Well, Karens. If a Karen calls about a law being broken, right? When does she? When does she stop being a Karen? When is she? When is she just a fucking righteous person? And when is she when does she cross the Karen Rubicon? I think Karen means someone that's either in the wrong or m- not minding their own business. I think it's it's not. I think it's so not minding their own business. Well, I, th- I think it's. I think that's what it is. Or like in the wrong, like ah, no, let me let me talk to your manager. It right. is their business, but right. you know, come on, out lady. of pocket. Oh, thank they're out you, of pocket, no, and, no, and um, they're out of pocket, and. But I, th- I, that was my thought. I was like, so she's not a Karen? Zan, it's I don't one think of those things. But it's philosophically, is it she though? is calling an authority. She says, call me a snitch or whatever at the beginning of the call. She said it. She might be a Karen to the police force. Right. But she's but, not a Karen to the world. Do you know what I mean? Yes. But what I would say is the difference isn't as major as everyone acts like it is. It's a matter of do I like what you're calling about or not? I think you got it. Do I like the transgression that you're against or not? Like uh, barbecue Becky. Yes. I believe was wrong. wrong. So the law she she was was citing was was wrong. They were in the place where they could use charcoal. Oh, yeah. And they said, she, you're wrong. And that's like, when she started all, I crying. think it's very funny that there's a place, there's places in Oakland that you can't use charcoal. <laughs> I like that. Like, no, nah, we don't use charcoal. You're not like, that's a no charcoal zone in well, Oakland. Well, if you know, do you barbecue? No. Uh, no. So it's because they no, have No, I the- eat sofritas <laughs> from oh, wherever the fuck I eat, eat it from. dirt. Um, no, there's just charcoal, like um, bins where you put your charcoals. You know what's a bummer about barbecuing what it's uh all that smoke is carcinogen it's like smoking a pack of cigarettes really yeah in that it's one of those things where i read it and was like let me read that again feels like staying true to the earth i know it's it's (laughs) like that's not that can't be wrong i well there's a lot of chemicals in charcoal yes and and the lighter fluid and the lighter fluid the now i don't know if burning wood fire Barbecue smoke contains a high level of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, which are known to cause DNA mutations, respiratory, respiratory disease, oh my God. <laughs> and even lung cancer. This is some Dr. Sebi shit. I'm like... Um, when? And look up... Is that all barbecue or is that just... How about wood barbecue? Oh my God. I've, I, I'm wood type, scared. temperature, and smoking duration are among the factors that could influence the quality. Yeah, that's... No, of smoked fish? <laughs> what? With smoke. Yep, wood also, but uh, to the same degrees. I don't know, but uh, it's got to be less than charcoal. You know, but, like, apparently it's just I bummer. heard a statistic, so I'm gonna just wing it. But there's higher levels of certain types of cancers in Korea because they do so much barbecuing. I believe that. Um, but the cool thing is, you all get it because you're doing that collective barbecue thing. 
So that's pretty cool. Guys, it's, is that racist? I don't think so. See you in court. <laughs> Hi. Okay. I'm Neil Brennan. I get sued all the time for things. Um, so yeah, she's so- not a snitch. But again, it's nice to see a police force recognize. Now, that's where you then the my next question logically yes. is, do they get there without riots? I don't know. It, look at the track record. The amount of behind the blue lining that yeah. goes on. I don't think so. I don't. I got to say, I don't think so. We, I as much. I, by the way, I still wouldn't put it past the jury to find a innocent. Oh, no, I don't. I don't think this like, is this a slam is dunk. Nice. The funny Let's, thing is, thank you for this nuts. isn't a slam dunk. No, no video. Everyone, <laughs> the police chief being like, this is wrong. They're having criminals come and be like, this is <laughs> fucked up. The Joker testifies tomorrow. Um, and Neil's like, the narrative. What about the narrative? I think we bring in. <laughs> um, I have a follow up to, to, um, to uh, Parasite. No, FYI. please. Here's what's great. Me and my detractors were both right. You and your huh? My detractors. Who? That the, that the rich people, they were all saying the rich people were the parasites. And I was like, no, the poor people were the parasites. Yes, I remember your argument. And the director said they're both. Great. So we were both right. But I didn't attack anybody. That's the difference. I didn't call people out. Do you feel good? Uh, it's going to be hard. For, this is going to be a real ayahuasca test on on Oscar night. Whether what We'll see what happens. Guys, we're white knuckle in this one. I ever tell you about the time I used the term white knuckle on the breakfast club and realized that it's an only white person phrase? Oh, I've said it a million times. Are you sure? Yeah. White knuckling is. But well, yeah, Charlemagne doesn't to... have white knuckles. No, no. No one has white knuckles right. except white people. Right. That's why they none of them knew what it meant. It was one of them terrifying racist moments that <laughs> so like, many white people <laughs> deal <laughs> with every day. White people. <laughs> I send you strength. <laughs> Stupid. <ass>. Um. <laughs> <laughs> white people when they do talk shows Bianca it is a it is a landmine <laughs> everywhere terrifying. Um, okay so last we record Monday release Tuesday today we're going to be late last Tuesday we release and that day Ugh. there's a maniac stomps uh, an old Asian woman right Brandon Elliott was the guy's name she, he stomped a... Don't even show we don't it. Even, it's awful. Come on. Um, come on, Will. Now, and then people were going, these doormen should be ashamed of themselves. Everybody should be ashamed of themselves. Then you find out who this guy is. This maniac. So that's where call the cops comes in. <laughs> that's where my theory of like call the cops. It's not up to a doorman to be able to stop a mom murderer. Right. The guy murdered yeah. his mom. That's one of the things where, like, I'm not. I d- everyone goes. I would have gone out. So now that no. you know he's a mom murderer, how? If I'm one of the doormen, I'm like, good. I'm glad I didn't go out. I'm sorry that that happened to that woman, but I'd be why? So now it's my responsibility. And this is from the homeless walker. So the houseless <laughs> home. Okay. Houseless. Home hunters. Um, house International. Hunters. House hunters. Homey hunters. It's, yes. Uh, the, so uh, what, did you, what do you think of my theory? Well, I don't love it. Okay. But I think you're focusing on, you're focusing on the fact that I didn't come out, where I think most people, most people would intervene, you know? I don't know. There's a, our sample size is two people. And neither of them intervened. There's also that Kitty Genovese case, the classic. Yeah, the classic, all the people watch. Yeah. But then when you, uh, I watched a documentary on it. I have too, and I've heard 40 theories about why no one intervened. I And I still don't. I do Kitty think Genovese though, is a woman who was getting raped in, a, uh, in the 50s in an alleyway it, with an earshot of a, probably 100 people. And no one intervened. And there's a bunch of theories about why right. no one intervened. And I don't even remember what the theory of the movie was. Um, there was a few, but I what I got from it was that, and I think it's happened to everybody, is that someone thinks someone already called the cops. Uh-huh. 
someone's already it's so like gross somebody and must have called the cops. Yeah, it's gross and it's heinous. So someone has already called the cops. So yeah. I've done that. I've seen a car accident or anything and I've called 911 and every single time I have called. And it's been a lot. Always in like an emergency setting. Yeah. Uh, they're like, yeah, yeah, we already have like a bunch yeah. of calls for it. And they yell at you like, what the fuck? Like, I'm, why are you doing it? You're wasting our time, lady. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. They want you off the line as quick yeah. as possible. So I, uh, that is what I think. I, I don't, let me caveat different. this by saying, I hope I would have done something. I hope I would have not really? thought. Really? It sounds like you're thinking, no, I'm glad I, I wouldn't no. have. I don't blame the doorman. I hope I would have done something. I, at the same time, I mean, I guess I would have. When you see the guy look, I would have been like, yeah, I mean, I do have a Bowflex too, so that's I know, and you different. have this assault gun. I have, you just the, shot I have him two with salt. different tasers. I have the salt gun, but the bug assault. The bug assault, you could have, he was um, bugging. I have a, I can be very sarcastic. <laughs> just like, um, just read like, him to what film. What are you even literally <laughs> doing? Like, what are you? What even are you right what now? What even um, are you? He'd uh, be like, my soul. <laughs> Um, Ooh, my soul. My soul. <laughs> uh, so I'd like to think I would have done something, but I can have understand you ever not doing in? anything. Have you stepped in? And I also, what do you do when you see a mom murderer kicking a woman? Have you ever stepped in? Have you ever supermaned a situation? Not Superman the, not, that Nothing hell. comes to mind. I've called 911 for like a homeless guy laying in the middle of the sidewalk that looks like injured. What if people need help? Let's say it's not a dispute. Give me more specific. Um, like, I don't know. This one guy's cane got caught in the bus and was taken off and I ran in front of the bus and I was like, stop. No one else did anything, which was yeah. so weird. I'm like, what? hello. I this think it's, but it's the same theory of like, ah, some, well, I don't know. Maybe no, he did it was intentionally. Eh. No, he was getting well, that, but that's your brain will tell you this shit. Guy, like, so you don't have to think of it. You ever have your brain tell you shit? probably wanted his cane stuck in that bus. Or whatever. Like, maybe. <laughs> oh, my God. By the way, you said something really funny last week that I didn't. We need a song for Bianca. I'm sorry. That was funny. Yeah, please. Um, that was a lot. <laughs> it was like, uh, when I said the mother, daughter, mommy, daughter, sister that CDC lady, like as a mother, mm. and you said it's like the Holy Trinity. Mm. You said some of the effect yeah, of you. You didn't exactly <laughs> nail the landing. That's what you were going for, and that's very funny. I'm, a, I'm, I'm a comics muse. I just like there was some. I you could have yes. taken that and yes. turned it. Um, Thank you. And uh, so your brain will tell you dumb shit when you see something like that. Like you ever your first like, you ever be waiting to meet somebody, and people come up and be like, "Is that him?" And then you go. That doesn't look like him at all. He's a foot taller than that. You're like, ah, right. oh, your brain's like, no, that's him. And then you're like, no, that's not him. You know what's happening? But like if, you know, when you're dating and then just some people, it just like fizzles. Yeah. You don't hear from them. <laughs> Sometimes I've thought maybe he died. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny to yeah. think that your he, brain. Well, is, I, that your brain thinks it's more likely that someone has died than lost interest in you. Like, well, he's probably dead. He's probably in a ditch somewhere. Um, so call the cops. And if you're a cop, don't be a dirty cop. I feel like, okay, Neil, there's a little more to unpack here. Why is calling the cops a Karen snitching thing? If, it, I, if there's what, an actual Right. What I'm saying situation. is some Karens yes. are justified. But then they're not a Karen. I, again, but you, know you don't know that until afterward. Do you know what I mean? Like, th it's easy to say someone's a Karen or not in retrospect. Monday morning Karen Karening is what happens. <laughs> you said it. Um, is is that it's easy to say that someone's a Karen once you know all the facts? But like, eh, so that I call the cops if that's happening, and that's again, it's like if there's a wild dog, what do you do? That guy's a fucking clear no, sociopath. Right. But I will say men, like my example, I don't know why a male presence does uh, change some shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it, even if you're not like, hey, put up your dudes. Yeah. If you're just there. Yeah. 
that old yelling lady's helps. Not, yelling, that old lady's not gonna take. He knows if I was like, "Hey, leave her alone," like, yeah. psh, like yeah. th- I'm no threat. But at least that guy looks kind of official. I don't know. I just think yeah, it the does, uniform helps. Yeah, uniform helps. I don't know. Even if you're not gonna physically do anything, just saying something. I, I think I don't know. What does it do to a man? You think like if you? I think that I, I had a. I remember when the Lakers signed Ron Artest. Don't test our test. And he and somebody's like, I just think he's gonna be bad for the team and needs technicals. And I go, he's not gonna get one technical because of Kobe. There's like a thing that happens mm. when somebody like Kobe yes. Bryant's around that you're like, I'm crazy. Like I know a, a female celebrity who was getting death threats. And instead of calling the cops, she called the Crips. And the guy who was threatening her was about. crazy. And but crazy people, even crazy people understand violence. And like I you don't even need to write it. I it, of course, of course, of course. <laughs> um but even crazy people understand violence. Yeah. Like yeah, that's a they're thing like, that they're like the CA is intact is is following me, but like, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> so yeah. So there is a thing, it's like uh focuses the mind a bit. That you might, you know, I might, it's, here's a story. There was a, on set, it was on Chappelle show. There was a black dude who worked in the show. He was like 55. I'm 30. I'm in charge, a little snappy. Mm -hmm. And I snapped at him one time and he just looked at me like, you know, I'll fuck you up. He didn't (laughs) say a word. No, but he. He just communicated like. Right. Yeah, you're all whatever you are here, but it would be worth it for me to fuck you up <laughs> to lose. <laughs> this job's not that important to me. Right. My pride's more important than this job. It's And his wife had a good job, too. <laughs> <laughs> so he was, uh, he he was like safety nets. Yeah, like, he was straight. I mean, I've had weird outside altercations with men. And then a stranger man comes to my defense and the entire situation is different. Well, that's the good and bad part about, like, why don't you, it's the thing I was saying about Delia or anybody, like, why don't you disavow them? Because I don't want to fight them. Yeah, when you step in, it's like, now we have a problem. Yeah, like, so. there's, I, like I said, there are there's a comic who will, could beat me up there's right now. <laughs> no, no, there's only one comedian. <laughs> um, uh so yeah like so because i and then it's like oh yeah. you it's like you want some of this i've got extra right so would you, have, you like some that's the problem there is a risk of it be you're taking on your problem like this one guy hit my car door they were having some domestic violence situation he hit my car door while i was sitting in it parked what good luck so i was like hey man if you hit my car door what the fuck and he's just screaming at me. He's like, my wife's crazy. And I'm not, no, that was you. You opened them. I'm like, no, nah, it wasn't me. I was just, he's screaming at me. Then a dude from across the street is like, hey, you need help. I was like, I need some help. Actually, can you help me? And he comes over. He's towering over this guy. And he, I mean, he punks him so badly. Like, I won't say everything that he says. And the guy, at the end of it, I have his insurance. I have his license. He's apologizing. Text me another. Hey, I heard he renewed his vows with his wife. <laughs> He's stupid. That's how deeply you affected him. But I don't. I, he was like, "Fuck you! I'm not paying for that." I'm like, "Yeah." I, I was like, uh, "Yeah," and that's what? where it's like, "Yeah, you are." It's the that's law. where like the jungle. <laughs> but that's also like that's not the the law. And then he goes, "Fuck the law," and then then jungle law comes. Yeah. Which is, Wait, I will fuck you, you up. Jumbo? I don't know what color he is. Okay, um, yeah. Jungle law comes, and it's like I'm bigger than you. Right. So now what? Yeah, just just animals. Yeah, so bless you, but I'll fuck you up. What do you want to do? <laughs> I will fuck you up. <laughs> that's the great thing, but I that's like why male tension gets resolved. And it's why men, obviously there's always like a young dumb friend that hasn't gotten knocked the fuck out enough yeah. or has like, or likes that kind of yeah. chaos. But most guys love avoiding altercation. Yeah. And it's just like, Oh uh, no! Yeah, it's, it's too real. There's like packs of knuckleheads mm. 
occasion and like there's a few in every one city. every goes one of the well, pack every always club goes every nightclub has one pack of knuckleheads yes and always a one in the pack of knuckleheads will eventually go to jail at some point yeah but they all they stood with him they, <laughs> they went to his trial thieves. i'll come see i'll put money in your commie <laughs> um speaking of something matt gates putting something in put something and something and something and something, in something, in something, in something in, <laughs> um he looks like he I mean, that's one of those things of like, not him, <laughs> not the absolute logo for a guy who fucks prostitutes uh, underage or what. I don't know what he's accused of, but 17 uh, year old. Uh, did you he, did you see him on Tucker Collins? T- yeah, Tucker, that was uh, it was great. That was like Tucker was, went into full squint. Huh? He was his he mouth got to, very small. He went into what? a deep squint. I made the joke that he should have just put an eye mask on. <laughs> He was so squinty. Full squid. And just like in a sketch, he would have put an eye mask on. Um, it was so funny. He's like, she was a 17-year-old woman. Yeah. I'm like, nah, that's not yeah. how debates work. He looks evil. Um, he looks like an evil He guy. looks, somebody said he looks like uh, the Joker. I can't remember what he looks like. He looks like Jack Nicholson's Joker's yeah. son, basically. <laughs> Yes. Not even son, nephew. Because when your eyebrows cut off your yeah. eye a little, mm-hmm. you just look a l- little villainy. Yep. Also, um, Matt Gates is attractive to 70% of white women. That's my theory. Really? That's yeah. high. Yeah, he's tall, he's white, he's 37, he's high status, he's got money. He'll he'll send you a cash app. <laughs> Also, when it was cash up, I was like, I mean, also just like, guys, what did you didn't think you'd get anything for that? Like you didn't. That's the thing is like you everything you do is on. There is a company. I forgot what it's called. They are they're a third party company that's with every every cash app, Venmo, PayPal. They there's a company. I forgot the name, but they report everything you do to the IRS. Mm -hmm. It's all there's not. This isn't like magic money being transferred and there's no like paper no it's absolutely uh, it's a thing it's a printout yeah location time (laughs) for what like emoji why yeah emojis that'll be used and that will be used in a court case (laughs) and you send and what did the emoji say emoji (laughs) mean miss um it can mean like crying laughing um yeah like he's in real trouble and he's gonna do real time yeah and when you read it they're they're investigating another Florida yeah the guy who's green, like green green man rid, rid, ridiculously fucking corrupt he's re- like he's like a villain taking people's licenses yeah he was on john oliver like taking people's thrown away licenses like i will i'll be needing that <laughs> i'll take that from here thanks leave me with the licenses guys you can i'll turn the lights out don't worry um then leave the safe open Greenberg. while we're here Greenberg, um, and then he's like, "Yo, I got these girls," and then they went and fucked Gates. I'm like, what? an indictment states that Greenberg used his access as an elected official to look up information about a girl between the ages of 14 and 17 Sicko. to produce a false identification document and to facilitate his efforts to engage in commercial sex acts. Oh my god, that's so bad. Maybe he wanted her to be overage. <laughs> yeah, he's just okay. Let me make you fit. That's a new one. Like, that's a reverse on, like, hey, mister, will you buy us beer? Right. Or, like, getting a fake ID. Like, no, yeah, I'm going to no. make you a fake ID. I'm going to make you fake ID. Then person. it's legal for me to have sex with you. Like, no. <laughs> to who? It's a fake ID. Um, he, Gates has denied having sexual relationships with underage girls, paying women for sex, or visiting sugar daddy websites. He said that he has been generous with girlfriends in the past and has never engaged in illegal conduct. <laughs> Uh, yeah. He also said, "I'm not a monk," which is very funny. Yeah. Like, no, you're you're not even you're not really a man. <laughs> I don't even think you're a law-abiding citizen. So there's a big, but that's just they play this thing about that my dad's being extorted, right. and like, no, no, he's not. Also, the extortion thing against his dad is very weird. Really strange. This it's about a missing wanna... a guy who got kidnapped in Iran by the right. government, and they presume dead, but they wanted to pay money. Like they wanted him to pay money for them to investigate it, and then Matt Gates would get the credit. It was like what, what? 
Yeah. It, it was, was like a bunch of drug people. <laughs> We're like, hey, man, so we're going to get, you know, <laughs> they this were guy really missing, high when they but, thought yeah. about it. Man. You know, he's missing. <laughs> so, all right. We tell, what's that dude's name as senator? <laughs> we get his dad. Dude. Um, the, the best is when he's like, me and you and your wife and we me and my then friend. I don't remember. <laughs> I've never had dinner. Tucker Carlson. Dinner's not something I eat. You remember. That's uh, one of the strangest interviews I've ever done. <laughs> uh, it was great. Um, oh Trump. Guys, you're not going to believe this. Donald Trump did some sh illegal shit. You guys. Um, what he he basically hit people with the old renewing <laughs> the re the auto renew. The auto renew, aka handy. Yeah. The handy cleaning. That's app. funny. Um, Everybody. He hit them with people would donate yeah. and they would if they wanted to donate $40 the the auto renew button must have been confusing or something. Right. Purposely so everyone confusing. was auto renewing for every week. Every week. Wow. I thought it was month. No, Fuck. it was week. Can I so I was reading the article. This guy who's on a little less than $1000 a month uh salary or you know yeah. like financial situation he oh there it is five hundred dollars he donated five hundred dollars of his thousand dollar monthly finances and then after in a month three thousand dollars in a month they got him for three thousand dollars that's wild that's, i don't feel bad right this is this is why he won't win again because if you I are directly can't fuck he did people. but he didn't yeah you can't that's brazen. That's fucked That's so, up. like, I, you can't shade that. You can't go, they're trying to yeah, make no, me look they, like... No, they dog. Look. It's an auto-renew thing. This is just a fucking Better Business Bureau. Right. He's the first president that's going to get in trouble with the Better Business Bureau. <laughs> <laughs> he's not going to get impeached, but he's going to get that's a ton of so the, the troubleshooters. Deal. The Channel 5. <laughs> the eye on... Seven yeah, on your side? Yeah, the seven on your side are going to come. Uh, but, uh, you know... It, why would you donate over fifty percent of your income for the month? Because he's a because he's a, the kind of dick you'd like to be to to elitist liberals. Mm. That's it. Because it, emotionally, he's the so many people's avatar. It's crazy. It's just like so you're gonna go against your bottom line. Yeah. If it means I'm better than black people. That's what Jeez. a lot of this shit is. Preach. Yeah. You if it preach. means I'm better than black people or Mexicans or whatever, then yeah. No, no price is too high. Yeah. No price. It's like I get to, you're going to create a club that guarantees I'm better than blacks mm. and Latinos and Arabs and, and Asian. Asians and of course Russians, part of Asia. Mm. Uh, yeah. So that's all it is. And you're going to stick it to the libs <laughs> and make Arabs. them seem like their reality is fake. Well, yeah. Double sign me, sign me. auto renew me twice. <laughs> you can't auto renew me enough based on this deal. Um, yeah, I but that's you, this to me is like a bridge too far. Like that's where people go, you know, uh, he might be, I don't know. Yeah, I don't want to believe it. This but. is maybe convincing the most. Yes, yeah. Trump, Trump, yes, Trump, yes. or because these will people go like he ripped us Wait, off and all that. Shit. I loved you, yeah, yeah, that's what will happen. Um, and now it's an evangelical thing, yeah, it's like what happened to. Jerry Falwell and Jim Baker and all those people well, in the it, 80s and 90s. But it, don't you think, if you think about it, I mean, church is auto renewed weekly. It is. Uh, if you, you, but you got to hand it in, right? Oh, yeah. Then you still got to hand it in. What's it called? The basket. The basket. They have a, a special term for it called the basket. Dub basket. Dub basket. <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah, this is the kind of thing that that but and the, he's like an evangelical and he's the god oh shit he's a televangelist yeah and he's the guy and he's also there also the god the... it's a double he does double duty <laughs> so i mean in some it. ways they're all the god but he's really the god he really is yeah in some respects but apparently now he has to refund i think to the tune of 122 million yeah. dollars and if i know anything about donald trump he done spent <laughs> that money he done spent it all on gold leaf <laughs> shit that is by the got it by the yard and it's he got a deal and it's not actually gold 
And anyhow, you're not getting your money back. Um, Evanston. You know about Evanston? No, what's going on? It's like in Likely First, Chicago suburb. Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes suburb of Chicago, Evanston approves reparations for black residents. Racial equality <laughs> and inclusion. Athlians. Uh, it's pretty incredible. It's great. It's, this is where, this is like not, like this is the problem with reparations. This is going to be the speed bump or the hindrance to it being pleasing to everybody, which is it'll grant qualifying households up to $25,000 for down payments or home repairs if they if they or a member of their family lived in Evanston in a certain period. Okay. Um that's fine. Yeah, it's but it's you know, it's not unqualified. It's not like let's get to Evanston and get this money. Mm. It's like No, it feels very uh nineteen nineteen and nineteen sixty nine, if you were black, because uh, they they have housing discrimination like proven housing discrimination. Right. This is where I have a theory what? that Roy Wood may do a Daily Show piece. Black people should sue uh, white people for uh, antitrust things, for like monopoly shit, because it's wrong. Like, do you know what I mean? Like but, the well, whole thing's rigged. Oh, of course. Fucking everything. But you're going to sue everybody? I mean, fuck it, Bianca. <laughs> this would be a good tester. It's pretty limited. It's $10 million. I, $25, $25. Do, do you have to live in Evanston to get the money? That's what I'm curious about. Do you have I to like move know. to Evanston? Or maybe you just get it. Your family had to live there. Right. They had to live there. But is that now you're entitled? Uh, it's, it's weed money, which... Super cool. So it's super cool. cool. It's super dank money. Um, the bills are actually danker than normal bills. <laughs> stop, stop saying uh, dank. It will grant households for down payments or home. But is it in Evanston? We don't know. Oh, all right. So you got to reside in Evanston. At the time of disbursement of funds. So then you could leave. Yeah, but you have to own... Well, maybe you could rent, but you got to spend it on. It can only be spent. On, it's not cash, so it can only be spent on home repairs. I guess you could repair payment. it. You could flip a house. Get a get a house in Evanston. I'm sure. It's I lovely. mean, what's the what's the? It's only seven fifty minimum. <laughs> uh, yeah, that I live near there. You did well, Matt. Yeah, that's where Northwestern is. I don't get it. Where, when did you live there? When I say I live in Chicago. Oh, you live. North, that's called the North Shore. No, this is there's a water body there is, of water near, near Evanston. On it's on the water. That's there's nice. the beach. Are there black people there? There's like twenty percent black people. Okay. So or it's seventeen or something. Um, but uh, we is they it were, expensive? They were they were scary. I'm kidding. Was it, um, is, it, is, it, is it is it like a? It's you know it's like not it's not like the hood. It's not like it's like. Middle class. No, it's just like a developed city. It's not like some. Oh yeah, yeah. like Northwestern's there. Oh, okay, it's cool. Like you know, it's a, it's it's like a small. I don't know what the seventy thousand people. How many people? Wow. Um, seventy four thousand. Oh, one. that's good small one, Neil. Fuck. Um. What what city did you actually? Well met. The north of Well met. Well met. Twenty-seven thousand. Wow. Sweet. That they have a Baha'i temple in Wilmette. What's it's a Baha'i? Amazing. That thing on the right. What? What is that? It's a Baha'i. It's oh a Baha'i, 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 yeah. Baha'i. Baha'i, as we I called you it said in the eighties. Baha'i. 80s. It's like Baha'i. Baha'i. You go to the Baha'i temple. <laughs> uh, rich white people in Wilmette, uh, but they're Midwestern rich white people, so they will not buy nice cars. <laughs> Honestly, they're all rich, and they're like, we save our money. <laughs> Catholic Free school. Um. Uh, what's the so pa- basically the um, church membership nationwide? Oh, the is church attendance is down. Church, yeah. church, yeah. Membership is the first time it's not a majority. They did a study meaning of of America. eligible people. Yeah, of Americans. Is it Christian, Catholic, just Christian? I think it's every church membership. I think. Uh, oh, it's everything. I mean. 
there's an upside and downside to this. What's the downside? Downside is there people have no moral compass. Well, that's true. But can't you get a moral compass? I mean, I wasn't you raised can. religious at all, and I have you a moral can. compass. You can. That's the thing is you can. It's like I did a I did a, a, a Daily Show feature about um, that they need Jesus. Like Republicans need Jesus. They used to. It used to be ballast for their behavior. Like, yeah. well, we need to kind of at least appear right. And now they still claim it because they need evangelical votes, but they don't. They don't. Do they that. don't even really pretend anymore. No, they're like fucking underage girls and yeah. doing this, and yeah. it's it's basically like. Are we all voting for the same way? Well, yeah, I just, it's the, this gets into the thing of religions cause more wars mm. than anything. And I would argue it's also prevented more punches in the face. Like it's, there's, it's not all bad. Like it's oppressive. It's, it is like oppressive in a million ways, but there's shit that's good for society, which is why if you look at like the 10 commandments and the, the yeah. kind of bill of rights, they're not that similar, but just it's basically the laws. Yeah. It's like uh, the joke that I've never done is like there was a government and they had laws and they were like, we need a sky cop. <laughs> How do we get this? Let's say God wants this also. And then they write up right. this thing and it's like, hey, we're fine with murder. <laughs> it's God. Sky cop. Like what? Yeah. So sky cop. Sky cop. <laughs> Sky um, Cop. Dear Sky Cop. Coming that's how this I pray. fall, Sky Cop. Um, so I don't think it's all negative. Uh, no, but I, I think it's positive. No. Oh, well, the lack of religion. Okay. What's your argument for most people not going to a church? Because it's not the, the the atheism thing is creeps, but it's not creeping that quickly. No, I don't think you have to be an atheist. And I also don't think you have to be part of a church. I mean, I grew up not religious at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my mom believes in like she's a, grew up Catholic and my on my dad's side, uh, my grandma's Muslim. Mm -hmm. But it's not it's not in any yeah. part of my childhood. The only time I ever went to church is when I stayed the night at a particular person's house on a Saturday. And they're like, we, we're going to church, which is so funny when you think about it. Now, someone would sue you if you took your, their kid if to If you church. made their kid after a sleepover go to right. church. It's, you don't even, <laughs> it's fine. We're going to throw hands. I know. At I, least. I would sit in Sunday school. I'm like, this blows. You would go to Sunday school? Well, I was a kid. But with your friend? Yeah. Oh. I always fucked up. I'm like, fuck. I like my parents wouldn't be able to pick me up early enough before yeah. they went to church. Yeah. And we lived a mile away and they wouldn't drop me off. So it's just like, hey, there were a lot of fake kidnappings. In the <laughs> there was really, it was, the, so it was many. the golden age. You know, that was an entirely fake stat made up by Adam Walsh's dad. What? The, no. So remember Adam Walsh? Yeah. yeah the, it was his name, the guy on the American. And then wanted. John Walsh John became Walsh. the host. Guy's dad, guy's son got kidnapped, murdered. Dad becomes an advocate. Somehow parlays that into hosting America's Most Wanted. Right. Um, where he'd wear a leather jacket um, and a t-shirt. And uh, they would say that there were hundreds of thousands of kidnappings a year. And, and then if you dug down, it was like under a thousand. Yeah, it's not. It wasn't it, it it wasn't a common problem at all and they lied about it. That's so weird. They lied about it cuz he it was I don't think it was like directly as good. Just take John Walsh out of it. Between 350 fewer than 350 people under the age of 21 have been abducted by strangers in the United States per year between 2010 and 2017. That's so it's few. So few. For how many For millions? how much the amount of terror it creates. I know. And in the 80s, it was like, do you know like, where does a child children? go missing every 40 seconds? Like, where the fuck do you come up with that? Um, yeah, those like there was one kidnapping stats by year. Crime in the United States, robbery and assault is down. If you're ever scared on the street, remember that crime is down to 1960s levels. Yeah. So think about how scared you'd be walking around in 1965. 
I will say though, for a woman, it's always yeah, a woman, little it's scary. Always 19, it's, a, it's, it's always nineteen. <laughs> it's always nineteen. It's always twenty twenty one. Um, murder and rape is down a good amount. Um, violent crime down. Uh, violence against children two to seventeen is going down. I think too quickly, but yeah, it's <laughs> up to them. Kids. Uh, look up. Go back to kidnapping. Go back to the okay. How many? Uh, you got that one. What age gets? Oh, that's interesting. What age gets kidnapped the most? Let's guess. Hold on. I'm gonna go with nine, and uh, I don't know. I'm feeling eight or nine. I was. I was gonna say eight. Twelve. Twelve and older. Why? They could do something about it. Do you know what I mean? Like it feels yeah, like you would want to take. They throw hands. You're gonna have your hands full. I mean, obviously, if you don't feed them, they're not going to When grow. a child's under 12, years, there's no second guessing foul play. How many oh. kidnappings 1980s? You know why it's 12 and older? Because... Sex? No, because it's uh, it's more vague as to why they're missing. Oh, well, by the way, most of them are custody battles. Most, most Amber of them are Alerts father. are yeah, custodies. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Top, top, top. Most dispelled kidnap myths uh, do little to allay parents' fears. Click on that, please. That's uh, fine. It's fine. fine. All right. The, the point is, the, all those stats were bullshit. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Like the they problem weren't. is, it's so sensationalized too. Well, it is terrifying. No, it's totally terrifying. But when one person gets kidnapped, I mean, we're still talking about Jean Benet Ramsey. That's fine. I don't think there's something wrong with bringing attention to kids being kidnapped, and there is like trafficking issues around the world you know so yeah. it's not like why are we still talking about this well but i don't think i think trafficking is mostly like the philippines and shit like that like like dirt poor and you it's it's i think it's, you might not be right where most human trafficking is from where most victims of human trafficking it's like Thought the it. worst the economy mm, yeah no no 100 percent. and sometimes they're not i mean my stepmom's filipino and she 100%. when she goes to the philippines she says she'll see very rich white men with like groups of yeah. kids and a few times she's boom estimates uh that suggest that fifty thousand people are trapped in the united states each year most often from mexico and or the yeah philippines. but they're in the united states Right, but the, if they're in the United States, that means they're also everywhere. It's yeah. like a hub. Basically. No, no, for sure. Oh, yeah, I'd get. And obviously, there's they're going from poor to rich. Right. Um. Yeah. Uh, it's, terrifying. It's so should be so stopped, scary. but it's rare. Not human trafficking. That's a whole it's other. It's weird. Issue. It's like that's another yeah. issue, but then this. this the kidnapping like, thing was: I'm going to take a ten year old boy and torture and murder him. And the amount of that, I think, is incredibly small. Right. Like, I don't know him. I mean, it happens at a lot of Goodwills, but I don't <laughs> know him. And I'm going to, like, cha I'm going to find him and put him in my van or whatever yeah. is, I think that's bullshit. I think that's not, I think it's incredibly rare. But you know what's weird? We all, as kids, and maybe not as, maybe not men as much. I mean, I don't know. I think boys are preyed upon also, but. Everyone has a scary story of someone doing something very creepy when they were a kid. Stranger wise. Like your mom, the flashers. Yeah. I have so many. Uh so I'm trying to think if I have any I don't have no one was interested in me <laughs> as a mm, victim from with a that sexual, body. Yeah. I mean, it uh, was this was before I had a bow fly. <laughs> um this is just wiffle ball. I had body by <laughs> wiffle ball back wiffle. then. Uh but yeah, so it's a fake set. I don't even know how we got on that. Um, um, from church, church attendance being well, down. Oh, um, yeah. uh, well, no. Well, that's the thing of is okay. church is a little bit of church good for a society? I just think that church in a vacuum is great. On paper, church seems lovely. Yeah. And, okay, cool. Like, goals ways it's to like hate. largely not about hate the, the, no, you want to talk paper. about most of the shit it just all the attention goes to gays and all that stuff but yeah. it's also like oh there's a lot of soup there's a lot, there's of, a lot of community yeah there's a lot of community uh um, there's a lot of soup there's a lot of community there's, i just mean you don't need church with for a moral compass i wasn't raised in 
anything close to a church at all. No, almost no church influence in my life. Yeah. And I know a lot of people like that. Like even in Europe, most it's not a really religious place anymore. And yeah, you know what I mean? You can find countries that have grown out of yeah. like religion being the moral compass. Yeah. And they don't, they're not gone to shit. So yeah, it's European socialism. <laughs> it's like the fear of Europe. And it's like, no, it's fine. It's like eating. Yeah. Louis used to do a joke about going to Harlem. And he's like, just people working and walking to home. <laughs> But in your head, it's like Harlem. Yeah, Harlem. It's an establishing shot of Harlem. Um, <laughs> uh, fl- what's about the Florida Lake thing? Oh, I just thought it was not funny, but basically there's this this reservoir of toxic wastewater, uh-huh. and uh, it's it's breaking, and it's uh, everyone is being evacuated in the area. It might fuck up Tampa. It, not Tampa. Don't you swear to Don't God. You I will walk down there. Um, they're trying desperately to plug the hole. But it just, it reminds me of the fact that no one wants to deal with environmental issues until it's too there's late. a looming disaster. Yeah. They're trying to fill the, this hole. If this hole breaks, it goes into, um, I don't know, there's chemicals in the water that I yeah. I don't fully understand. That It's yep. just, it's going to poison the area. Yeah. It's going to poison uh, the water that there, it has like a whole ecosystem mm-hmm. that animals are living in and then they're thriving very close to this place where the wastewater is from like an old plant from the 60s or something mm-hmm. and they can't, they don't know what to do with the wastewater. This is where women might be better governors than men. I mean, there's probably millions of places, but this is, this strikes me as like, wow, mm. gotta think women. I, I had a thought the other day actually that what your what your body what you're forced to do by your body informs your morals mm. and your sense of a bunch of shit. Like women have a you have a wastewater plant. <laughs> you have, like, you have, you a have waste? to do Thank a you. bunch water of shit. Plant. You have a bunch of shit that you have to do in terms of upkeep that I will never have to do. Yeah. And it makes you more responsible. And makes you more fastidious and attention to detail and all that shit that you are, I think men would think naturally and it could be estrogen, it could be, but I don't think they're unrelated. No, or also when you think this could poison a whole area, you think of children, you think of family. Of like, course. Immediately Whereas you guys go like the golf course. <laughs> Not the course. <laughs> but it's it's the way guys would run. It's like, I don't know. It's mm, like a guy mm. with a, his first apartment where you're like, something's <laughs> fucked up about the ceiling. I don't, I just try not to pay too much attention to it. I'm just going to ignore it. Yeah. How about that? I'll ignore it and we'll see what happens. Yeah. So that's now what a most of these things state are. State of emergency yeah. and they're scrambling and trying to pump it and then trying to figure out what to do with it. It's, be, I don't know. It seems, it just seems like someone probably told somebody this could be a problem at some point in the past of course but it's like we don't have the money everything's true everything's chernobyl did you watch chernobyl yeah everything is well we should we it's the spider meme of of of, uh, of, of, of everything that's happened chernobyl's a fucking masterpiece it's amazing um chernobyl was craig mason the guy who wrote it also wrote scary movie no yep yes no he didn't that's Great. I also liked how everyone was British and they were Russian. We buy it. That's the old, that's what, (laughs) that's, you know what? Some colonialism, not so bad. (laughs) Thank you, colonialism. It's so funny. Thank you, uh, godmother of of colonialism, queen, queen mum. Chet Hanks had a tough week. Right after I said he could be the Tom Hanks. I know you. You cursed him with your. I cursed him. I put him on. I gave him. Put him on the summer jam screen, and he fucked up. And almost immediately, I said he could be on. In fact, he had done it. We recorded that Monday by Tuesday afternoon before the podcast aired. He had already come out that he punched his girlfriend and had a bloody eye and yeah. Um. Yeah. Just that's one of those things where. Why does she have a pot? Why is she wearing, why does she have Big Bird's coat in her hands? I got a piss. He's got a piss. She's, she's got a piss. 
Um, uh, she's she's got Big Bird's coat. She's got a pot, and that's one of those things <laughs> where good. it's like don't. This is, of course, he had a black girl girlfriend. No, no, but yeah, it's of already course. he has a black baby. They're always on red carpet. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Like the grandparent, like Tom, Tom and Hanks. Rita, yeah. yeah, they like bring the baby. She's so cute. Um, you didn't know. I didn't know. I don't follow that closely. I'm not going to. This is, I love hot goss. This is bottom tier celeb This goss. feels, this is what gross. is this? How? Uh, now that's completely dependent on his star status. What do you mean? What's going that on? That it's here? not good goss. No, 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 no. I like shitty good goss. But. You, what do you think is shitty about this? Uh, he's, you know, it's it doesn't stop with the. Uh, the fake Jamaican. He loves it too much. Now it's a white boy. Like he loves the attention so much and also has so many skeletons in his closet. I just, that's such a bad, the like person. I bet that, he doesn't have that many skeletons. He punches Said the girl. guy, said the guy who tried to <laughs> want him on, to, I wanted to book him. Right. I wanted to do his personal appearance <laughs> last week. No, it just feels so messy and not, a story that we're seeing CCTV uh, uh, footage of or something we just, oh shit, this celebrity got on oh, this. Oh, we didn't even put down Saweetie and no, we did not. Quavo and we can't. here. But what I'm, at least that is them living their life and we are pulling back the, <gasps> what is You know what this? I got from Sweetie and Quavo? Hmm. I, what I was trying to figure out is why they were fighting over a defibrillator. <laughs> yeah, it was a weird Fighting box. over a giant orange suitcase. Like, did Something you, did Joe must have been Biden it. give you the nuclear, the football? What's the fight about? Quavo, who, uh, of course, you, you may know, I know from uh, the John, the Madden 2019 campaign that I did. Mm -hmm. And he was good. And I believe Sweetie came to set and I didn't know who she was, but I just thought that girl's fucking gorgeous. She's so pretty. I um, love Sweetie. Yeah. Uh, and um, I live Sweetie. Yeah, I wouldn't trade places with the Migos. No. Like, I even when it was happening, it was like, this looks, this is going to be hard to figure out. Because they're going to have to break. There's just, there. it's it's like, hip-hop long, longevity is impossible. They were as hot as can be. Yeah. But there's three of them. They're like cousins. Mm. They like each other. And but but it's it yeah like it just seemed hard. Um, well, you want some hot goss? I love it. I love so, it. So there was a guy named uh, I don't know. He's just this guy. He has a show. It's like internet show with Puffy Son, and he was interviewing Sweetie, and he asked a question. Um, and it was kind of a gross question. He was just saying, "Hey, you know, Quavo's treating you right." He's treating you good. Oh, the it, anal question? The, like He's like, he put it. No, not anal. He yeah. just said, you know, he's treating you good. He sticks his tiny butt. Like, he's just being dumb. He sets up the question. Yeah. It's kind of a rude question, but she's fine with it. And then he goes, if to treat, to show Quavo that you appreciate him, yeah. who are you going to bring in as yeah. a like third person in a threesome? Yes. And then she goes like, I'm going to let him choose the thing that we're going to do the threesome. Like, basically, like, we're going to do it with a guy now. Yeah. Here. It was a good job. It was great. Um, anyways, why did the Migos go find that guy in a club in Atlanta and beat him up? <laughs> oh, that's funny. For that interview. They just that's that's beat him very up. funny. It's that's so one of those funny. things of like, you know, I'll fuck you up. <laughs> it's the same. We have a theme this episode. That's like Star and Buck Wild in 2002 or three made a Aaliyah joke. Damon Dash just went and got him fucked up. Mm. And they got fired. <laughs> oh my God. The joke did not go well. No, well, you can't really make an Aaliyah joke. Yeah. Especially yeah. at that time. That yeah, was, it was fresh. It was like. still a little too soon. Yeah. Even now, he's the, she's the. Sky guy. Black female Abraham Lincoln. Not yet. <laughs> Lincoln, you could, on, you could only joke about like three years ago. Uh, Johnny Carson used to say, like, you cannot get a laugh on Lincoln assassination jokes for some reason. Really? It It's new that it gets laughs. 
no, it's I not swear new. to God, it's new. <laughs> it's I swear so, to God, it's new. So funny. Yeah. People are funny. People just have weird things like, no, uh, I don't want to talk about that. Okay, here's one. Um, Adele had a birthday party and it was Titanic themed mm-hmm. and all these British people were like, too soon. That's funny. I was like, is it? Is it um, the, yeah, she can afford it. <laughs> She's quite well to do. Uh, so yeah, your this I don't like. Oh what? D D D. Yeah, DMX is not doing good. Um, has 15 kids, which I didn't know. Yeah. Um, and he, there were dudes doing the the rough rider shit in front of the hospital yesterday. Damn, I love that. And um, and I'm just so. That would be a really tough that he feels like a I'm sure to a lot of people it's like some old man. Yeah, but most people like that's when we tell Gen Z like hold the fuck up. Right. But no, also no, no, like y- it's very hard to listen to Rough Riders Anthem and not be like, oh, this is the hottest shit I've ever heard. I'm going to fucking kill somebody right now. This is so I'm so. You mean it's hard not to get looped into how good it is? It's hard not. Yeah, it's It's so good. So good. It makes you want to fight fight somebody. somebody. Yes, it makes you want to fuck up a radio. Even the beginning. It's before that. There's like. Oh yeah, the. Don't know what that Um, is. By the way, was that a Neptune? Swiss Beats. Swiss. No, okay, that sounds very Swiss. Swiss Beats. Beats, Sixteen years old. When he made that. So fucking. I believe we looked that up. Swiss Beats, Rough Riders Anthem, age. Uh, 16 years old. Oh, yeah. Well, he started making tracks 16. A year later, he sold his first. It's 17. Swiss Incredible. Beats doesn't get enough credit for him. He ideas. sure doesn't. And is one of the fathers of verses, him and him and yeah. Tim. And well, D-9, they were the first D-9's guys to not, do it. Yeah, they were the first guys. Um, he also did one with Just Blaze one. one night that was on Instagram like for two, three years ago. Oh, okay. Um, just where like they it. went back and forth. Um, Versus is so good. I didn't watch the one. Yo, can I tell you, first of all, Steve Harvey wouldn't shut the fuck up. And I love Steve Harvey. But Somebody had a video of Steve Harvey, not like an old woman being like, oh, blah. Yeah, it, I saw that. Which is yeah. like, uh, because every story was, <laughs> someone wrote, like, I'm done hearing these fake made up stories about like, so Steve has some like something to say in between. They were, they were, it just felt like that one family member that just tells hello. let me grab that mic that right. thing let me wait, wait wait the person that can't he was like and i heard that story and i wrote down and then i got on my bike i mean the amount of times he got on a bike and it's like a fake getting rejected by girls left and right there's stories were annoying they were annoying. He was saying that the songs reminded him like, of... Like, okay, Ron Isley would... The, Isley would sing the song. He's like, man, when I first heard that story... It was just like, when I first heard that story, this story was one, this blah, blah, blah. It was so many, like, Steve reminiscing stories. Yeah. But we heard... We just didn't hear as much from... The people? The Isley Brothers, yeah. Earth, Wind, and Fire, who both of them sound exactly the same as they're recording. It's so now you can appreciate it more. A lot they of recorded use- them like live performance. Well, first of all, I'm sure they did them live. Yeah. But even like the way the backup vocals are, they sound like someone singing backup vocals at a venue. Yes. So it's like you can do Dance of September and like, honey, yeah, that same like it was the same. It was they were. It singing- already set. They like planned for it. They they planned like you the album you're gonna love sounds exactly like these guys singing just standing in a fucking room it was so good but yeah. i really wanted to hear more from earth wind and fire and isley but the isley brothers man they're I I, you know who's got a lot of shit to say earth i prefer wind <laughs> earth has earth. some wild stories <laughs> yeah. uh, but like the, I, I think ron isley said they were telling random facts like one of the songs I think maybe this old heart of mine like in the 60s that hit came in the 60s they have like 30 albums 45 yeah. albums all these hits no 45 like platinum no 29 platinum albums yeah I believe that and it's just crazy these crazy yeah. stuff so you're in the presence of living legends that can still do it not 
you know, we wheel them out and clap for them. They can still do it. Yeah. They're still good. Yeah. And the songs are so fucking amazing. Everyone likes these songs. Here's a question. And it's Steve Harvey. How do you feel about old people kind of profiling and stunting and posing? I got to say, I don't like it. I, there's a bunch of pictures of Ronnie Isley on Instagram today, like in a fur with How a beard. How else do you want him to be wearing like a sweatsuit? You want I him to be I don't know. Ron I don't know. I don't know. You're weird though, because you don't like when people do anything off brand. I right, like but what I'm saying is, Ron Isley, you're this like, is hey. old dude at the club. Do you he's know what I mean? Old dude at the club. Right, but I'm saying it. Can the old dude at the club dress? I don't know what I want him to dress like, but. But I, something this? about the guy with the straight hair always made me uncomfortable. <laughs> leave it. Leave Earth alone. Is that Earth? Is that you? <laughs> um, and I like a suit. And they can still move. Well, I like, like the way Steve's dressed other than the hat and the glasses. Like, just wear a suit. They're all wearing suits, Neil. Right. But the one guy on the far right, describe his outfit to me. Uh, Ving Rhames. He's a, Ving is a Stacey Adams all day. <laughs> Um, like the headband uh, and the well, he's the, the guitarist too. Oh, bow, that explains bow, it. Bow, bow, bow. Well, guitarists can. Ooh, ooh, um, uh, yeah, I just don't know how. I believe after a certain age, you shouldn't try. I can't explain it. Neil. Just wear wear First something. First of all, that outfit's wild. Oh, that's so wild. <laughs> um, the. Just wear something a little less. I don't mind. Wait, go back to that old, the last one. I love the way Earth, Wind, and Fire looked back in the day. They looked amazing. Uh, this um, is amazing. They look the, like a, uh, they look like Parliament. They Whether really, they were, I don't yeah. know who came first. Probably I think they came first. No? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, hard to say. I don't like. Uh, why not dress like that? Which one? The uh, either one. If we're gonna, if they're trying, you want to them stay, to go wear this shit. Well, if they're trying <laughs> to be cool, let's fucking. If you're really about that life, no, that's like that scene in I'm gonna get you sucker where the guy gets out of jail and he's still wearing pimp clothes. Yeah, and it's the age, and they're like, "Brother, you've been shopping at the Goodwill." <laughs> like, no, um, no, they would have been, they would have been ripped for. Like, do you need the paisley suit? Is my question. Can you not wear? Bad. There's three paisley suits out of <laughs> six. So much paisley. Like Steve's got the shark skin, monochrome, color blocked, blue on blue on blue on blue. You take his hat and glasses off, I'm all with it. Okay. And the straight hair guy. But when does someone earn the right to dress however the fuck you I want? Don't, and it feels like it. And I'm not saying you're you let him dress how he wants. I'm saying when are you like, yeah, whatever you do, good, great, fantastic. Certain guys like Sly Stone... I don't like to see people have to make the transition from God like, deal. what do you, what should you wear as an old performer? It's like a lot of them wear uh, bedazzled shit. Do you like the way uh, uh, George Clinton dresses now? I don't know. Look he dresses the same with like way too many lanyards. Uh, I like what I'm seeing so far. Well, that's pretty cool, but that's a transition. No, like a. Can you that go one. head to toe outfit? Will maybe head to toe? Don't you type or just head outfit? To toe. <laughs> it's all Hillary. Oh, it's, it's a all, lot of Hillary. It's all Clinton. Hillary Clinton. <laughs> just do outfit. I like it. I like what I'm seeing. So you just want don't just stay stay in your on brand area. or I just don't. It's like what's the premise of a paisley suit? Because it's mm. not they look. It's good. not outer funk. It's not no. outer space funk. It's a blend of like okay. And also, they're there. They're there. They are there with other, whatever, funktastic people. So right. they don't want to Mariah carry the situation. Right, but George Clinton, there's a way to do your thing. Do you know what I mean? Not be like I'm I know what you the mean. It's a hard. Ball. It's I'm. I either want what George Clinton's wearing, which is excellent. It's excellent. Or. Um, which is better, maybe the best outfit I've ever seen. <laughs> Are you going to come in this outfit? I don't, I am I hate to come. Are you okay? So He's I, getting I'm dying. Clint. You guys, it's Bianca, so good. this is my final pie announcement to make. <laughs> That's maybe the best outfit I've ever seen. It's good. Um, and his old outfits were great. His old and it's like an good. update of an old outfit. A paisley suit, a shark skin paisley suit is like, 
well, I don't know what you're doing. You look like a guy who owns a cigar shop. Can you like, go down to the top bottom split? I'm just seeing if the other one. Yeah, that one. Just seeing how they get updated. You don't think they're pretty related to what they're wearing now? No, not even close. I don't think that a that a that a not enough paisley rhymestones suit, for you. Not a, a paisley suit is not the modern version of that. <laughs> it's know. more like black churchy. Uh, it's black church. It's black church slash entrepreneurs conference. So if you that go I watch, don't, I it's like no, nah, that's not music to me. So if you go watch West Side Connection in concert, you want them all to be sagging. Wearing like, I you want them all I flannel? want it. I don't want to see too short and skinny jeans. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's like the. I don't either, actually. It's like the how I like you. Yeah. Daffy Duck, be the be <laughs> Daffy Duck. As close as you can get, like if it, it's got to work. Yeah. Okay. That's all <laughs> I'm saying. It's not very specific. While we're on the subject, <laughs> I have another thing that I want to okay, get on. into, which is. When women, this is a useless observation. Hit it. This was big in the 80s and 90s. It's got a little something for you. Another got a little useless observation. For you. Listen, sometimes in pictorial spreads of naked women, sometimes they'll be wearing sneakers. Like a centerfold? Yeah. And I think it's so gross and Why? dumb and not at all sexy (laughs) and i've never understood it like you working out (laughs) i'm gonna work that that ass i just it's just like are you running from me also it's gonna hurt at some point to get a foot shoe like on my shoulder you know what i mean you know how i like to fuck um just take ladies shoes off when you come to the neil brennan photo (laughs) naked photo shoot thank you we didn't finish DMX, but it's a deep He's, bummer. I don't. I almost like. I'm just like no. Yeah. Sending good. Yes. We gotta send. You know, we gotta send some some good ayahuasca vibes towards him. We sure do. Uh, but it makes me sad. Yes. <laughs> well, it him. it's sad because it's like a guy who real. It's like a mental health thing. It's a poverty thing. It's a broken home thing. It's like a lot of shit conspired against him early. Mm. And he was, he was like pain. Yeah. Like all the like. It all was. Covered in blood. Yeah. Uh, blood in my blood. Um, and it's just a sad system. The sy- He is the system. And everyone who loves DMX, especially growing up, understands all of like he put so much of his pain in his music so there's that connection you know he had that connection that like corn and those dudes have with their fans or like lincoln park where they're like i there's something happening here i don't like not for me but dmx was yeah i was like not for me but like for like was for me but i wasn't like i drive around with my dad like i tell my dad to fuck off and like but i did it um one of my favorite Chappelle show appearances yeah. Um, he, they just kept hitting buttons, and we basically just made him do his greatest hits, <laughs> and it was great for, as far as I was concerned, because I always wanted hits. I wanted the music to be hits, and if we got DMX, don't want to hear the new one. I want to hear right. Rough Riders Anthem, Come and on. in the middle of it, he yelled at his producer, and it's very funny. That's because really he's like, "What the fuck are you doing?" It? He like played the wrong song. <laughs> He played the wrong version. He's like, where's the fucking beats coming on? Um, <laughs> you make him sound like an old Armenian. What the fuck? What the fuck? He, but he's one of the greatest. Rock has a good observation, which is pretty much every great hip hop artist could be an animated cartoon character vocally. Which is like, Chris, yep. making an appearance. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Moving on. Bad Bobby. Bad Bobby is at it again, gang. <laughs> Bobby. Bad Bobby. She didn't even claim she made a million dollars in six hours. She truly showed the receipt. Yeah. And uh, she made a million something in six hours. A million, uh, a million thirty in six hours. 
And uh, here's the thing I didn't know about her. She's just turned 18. No, that's why. I didn't know that. I thought she was like 21 or something. Neil, you were subscribing like Well, I didn't know. I content. tried to subscribe a few months ago and they kept saying <laughs> not it, no results. And I was like, check again. Uh, didn't know she was 18. And I'll say this. I'm even more impressed by her now. Because the fact that she went on television at 15 or 16, dropped four hooks in one Dr. Phil appearance is still one of the greatest feats I've ever seen on television. Mm -hmm. I don't need you to agree with you're, me. You're just a real... I feel like you're a fan. I am. I'm literally, literally a fan. And I think... Have you liked her Instagram post? I don't think I ever have. Okay. I do follow her, though. Okay. It was creepy, but now it's okay. totally Okay, because I was like... All I see here is you owe the government a lot of money. Leave me alone. That I'm Matt Gates. I'm the Matt <laughs> Gates of this podcast? No, no, no. No, I said when I see people posting how much they make... All oh. I see is stay away from me with all that government business. Meaning they're just going to tax her? Yeah, she has to like sort that out. She'll There's no out. W she for that. That's a good problem to have. <laughs> no, it's not. Um, trust me, as Wesley a person who makes a million dollars in six hours, pretty regular though. Moving on. Naked and Sneakers covered that. What's Mummy Parade? Mummy Parade. Is that mummies in this. England? Egypt just held an astonishing real life mummy parade. Through the streets of Cairo to celebrate the opening of a new museum. Tight. Um, see if there's any other photos, because fucking just mummy parade is I'm such a sketch a idea. No, it's great. Like, uh, like pitching. Like, uh, I have a sketch called a uh, mummy parade. <laughs> what was that one that you liked? That my silent. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? My silent. My the greatest of all time. The greatest book title of all time for a sketch. My silent. Um, <laughs> Spade always does, uh, would always go, it's a caveman who's afraid of caves. <laughs> um, the Yeah, but Mummy Parade is such a sketch idea and such a weird thing to do. I want to see Mummy, mummy Parade. Mummy, bring I don't me know, to Mummy, mummy. Parade. Mummy. Um, I don't know if... Horse looks terrified. If you can see the mummies <laughs> or they're just... Scroll. If you can see the mummies or they just kind of come by in the, the sarcophagus. But... Neil, you date her, Neil. You're absolutely right about date her. Um, she might even break up with me. <laughs> she might. Her, she's got a jawline that could break up with me. Mm. Like she's like, oh, Jawbreaker. you think I won't break up with you? You think I'm like gonna play the game with you where I try to figure out if Not you're so. losing interest? Women say I'm hard to read, which I don't see. Yeah, you were me. Um, you were a uh, in lobby of Cheesecake Factory with no buzzer the whole time. It's uh, it surprised me. Um. <laughs> Not anymore, though. Uh, I don't think wow. you can see the mum. Or wait, are those the mummies? Those are those four I had the thought that uh, you know how, like in in China, they'll have the missiles. In Russia, they'll have like yeah. a, a military parade. Joe Biden's so old. This is his parade where he just has mummies come by to salute, and he salutes them because he's <laughs> so close to being an actual and mummy himself. Corn pops there. By the way, Biden and Trump had more plastic surgery than combined than an Biden entire had plastic surgery? Biden had so much plastic no, surgery not. it's fucking insane. Biden before and after. He's the king of before facelift after. and plugs. Always had to do before. That's a doctored photo. That's That's, that's not even Al a good Sharpton. one. Well, the one on 2007 when he's with like he was shaggy oh, as shit. My. He had a ton of work done. Well, that's just the that's just the fox. That's the that's the eyebrow threading that. But goes he had away. all of it pulled back, like Trump without spray tan and hair plugs. <laughs> it's is so Henry Kissinger. fucking funny. He Why looks like he, a, look he like... looks like Putin basically. Putin's had a Putin has so much Botox. Oh, before and after Putin, just put Putin. he's just got a ton of Botox. His face got big Russian. Oh my god, he's, he's a smooth mother. And he now fucker. it doesn't fucking move. He's so smooth. Yeah. His forehead doesn't move. Oh he, my god! The the um, are, I didn't even think male politicians would get plastic surgery. I don't know why. Tons of them. I think Morgan oh. Murphy had a great tweet recently, which is uh, which is frightening. Uh, I can't wait till this summer, or as I call it, um, celebrity surgery unveiling season, because <laughs> it's a summer after a fucking Hello. quarantine. Uh, look at the look at yeah, Putin's wild. 
Putin's wife. Like, come on, man. You have yeah. no, no. Smooth. He has a cat eye. Smooth. Um, Very funny. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, you want to talk about rest and power, Kings? Mummy parade. <laughs> what do you mean? Okay, um, wait. Literally if, rest, literally in power, literally in Kings. What would our parade be in America? Like, what's our known for thing? Food. Just like fucking Oreo, fried Ore Snickers just and all Oreos, that shit. Just a giant fryer <laughs> and, and denial. <laughs> Here comes denial. This could be a longer sketch. Okay. You get it. You get it. Doc Watch. Okay. I only date women who do their own taxes. If you're sitting on an elephant, life is either going extremely well or extremely bad. You got any Doc Watches? I watched oh, uh, The Last Cruise, which... Uh, was about the cruise ship, the princess, whatever, mm -hmm. that had all the COVID cases early. Oh, wow. That and it shouldn't work. It's not long. Oh, that's good. It's like not even an hour. It's like 50 something, like 53. And um, it's better than it should be. But that's the great uh, thing about everybody videotaping themselves yeah, all the time. Like and people on, on, on boats have no and that are quarantined have nothing to do. Oh. Um, can they be outside of their rooms? No. They can't be at the pool? No. This no, is... they could not leave their rooms. That's my nightmare. Yeah. I get so seasick. They're docked, though. But no, just the... I don't think they do that in dock. They're too heavy. No. Yeah. I... They, don't, they don't really even do that. Unless it's really bad seas, I don't think you can feel a lot. Oh, every time I've been on a cruise, I'm green. You've been on a cruise? Yeah, I've been on I've been on cruises, Neil. Have you been on a cruise? Cruises are like uh Chris Brown of the sea. Where I'm like, how are you still doing this? How I, are people still doing how are people still interested in this? I went on a cruise as a kid. That's more fun. Cruise as a kid was fun. But I went on once as an adult. First of all, cruises are floating Vegas. Everybody yeah. in Vegas put on the water cruise um not great i didn't have a, a lot of fun and i i just felt this overwhelming sense of anxiety of how wasteful they are oh that i that just, i would was, find it unbearable made me so it was just hard. when you look at the smoke coming out of the chimney or the back where they're just fucking dumping sewage and and most like, cruises fly on either the plan panamanian flag or whatever something yeah. in the in with Korea. no with no regulations with no regulations so they're they're under panamanian law for yeah. example and um so those people make about 50 dollars a month yeah because they don't have to play like it'll be a car carnival cruise line yeah but it's not it's not it's like uh, you know they do it under wherever they can pay the yeah. least all the people are from different countries mm -hmm. so um they get it's all just on tips essentially and i think they make good money from wherever they're coming from why would they do it but there was a woman in the documentary who's like mother of two mm. on at sea yeah no it's a lot of <sighs> like and the, i the, the people i was with found figured out that they could take off the gratuity at the end of the trip uh, by the people you were with you mean your family your no, close no, close no, family no 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 you went on a cruise with not your family this no. is the biggest crime of the whole thing <laughs> with friends oh it was not i it like learned my lesson it was just not i didn't like i've never heard a good cruise story ever it's all either there's no, either you hear nothing or you hear diarrhea pools or death <laughs> Yeah, so this is a nothing story. It's not, it wasn't that bad. It was fine. Yeah. But I it just, it was floating Vegas. Can't escape. Well, it also, it does bring to mind when will buffets be back? I need a buffet. Here's the thing. I love buffets. You know I love buffets. You send me photos of buffets mm -hmm. every time you're in Asia. Mm -hmm. I they, Will they come back? Will they come back? I think they have to. <laughs> I think this country needs. That's Can you one talk of the to one of your rich in, Illuminati the, friends in the parade? Here comes the buffet, <laughs> the Golden Corral. Um, yeah, I they I think they have. I think there's gonna there'll, there'll be a thing where you, you can get a special a, waiver. They'll no, just make a it. Of waiver? course they will. A of buffet. Bianca, of course they will. They will have it <laughs> at like. They'll have it at fucking. 
they hold on. There's an article from June 29th of last year. Oh, how little we knew. Uh, when will be phase reopen? Oh, they're so 80s and dated. With or without them. a vaccine. Oh, they updated it in March, so that's good. Um, it's regularly updated for reference. It's probably going to be somebody giving you the buffet. You know. Well, what I mean. here's the thing that it goes on 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 remarked upon is almost no cases of covid are from touching or it's food. all aerosol it's like 90 something percent aerosol it's mm. not like wash your hands you know fucking wash your hands stop doing that shit yeah a that long just time prevents ago. my my well, no, but you will yeah it's my types yeah the Dis Those dysentery <laughs> stuff like that no strep throat oh strep oh yeah i got i actually did get strep during covid so you're welcome see so susceptible i was licking a buffet and i'll never forgive myself for it <laughs> okay wait so the last cruise i saw a documentary i don't remember the name of it it's all in spanish my bad but it basically talks about how the political climate of mexico got to today so it goes back into like it starts back in the 60s mm -hmm. and it just talks of politics and i didn't realize mexico was a one party system until the 80s 90s what was the party it's called like pri or rpi were or, they what was what, what were they about they were well so i wasn't gonna say it's interesting enough i'm only halfway through it but then i'm also watching narcos mexico season two and i'm like and then I watched another thing. And you're dreaming about it now and you uh, don't remember what you saw and what you I'm heard. getting, I'm starting to see a picture. But basically, um, any opposition is killed. It just kind of it's, the same that's thing. The, it's just, that's jungle. It's The world's really close to jungle rules. The party, what they stand for has a little bit changed throughout there. Yeah. But they're kind of, they start, kind of started turning bad. And there was, basically there was this push to say like, okay, we've got to change things. Mexico is becoming more and more corrupt. We're losing, you know, power to cartels more and more and stuff like that. And it's just, you just see how a country politically can just drop off the mm -hmm. edge into a free fall where now Mexico is really fucked. Yeah. For the people to live Italy's in. Italy's surprisingly fucked. Yeah. It's like There's more There's a lot tame, of countries that are fucked. Like, I feel like 40% of Western countries are kind of fucked. There's finding a really healthy democracy i think is hard when you yeah, look that's when you start what, that's why people were that's what january, january 6 was so so fucked up because it's like this is some others this is some fucking chechnya shit right but it's right here but and it's, it's right the same, here in our backyard it's right here can you believe that um, um but i will for i'm sorry that's kind of a shitty doc watch to tell you about it uh i'm not gonna watch it but there's because there's a QAnon one that I haven't watched that, oh, that I, I watched. I saw okay, I saw the episode one. It's so much. It's a lot. It's a yeah. lot of. It's, a, it's lot. a lot of like this person. It's his servers and this and name and ID. Server. And I didn't realize about the QAnon one. So it's on HBO Max and it's in. I think it like it's episodic. Yeah. I think they're on episode four. It's. I didn't realize how. Um, one, so stupid. It's so stupid. It's beyond. But not stupid. like how I said before. It was like that's dumb. How can you believe that? Yeah. The origins. Its origin story yeah. is so. Some anonymous guy named Q starts uh -huh. posting on, you know, four chan or eight chan, and yeah. then um, people are following it, and then he leaves certain people's uh, subs, yep. and then. You know, they're all like there's a South African guy with half of his teeth and he's so mad that Q left his sub. And now that he left his sub, he's like, well, he's fake. Yeah. That's the fake Q. Right. Well, I that's had the where real it just Q. gets into there's no amount of it's just it's apophenia. It's all that shit we talked about a month ago. It's yeah. I'm not that drawn to watch it. I started watching the WeWork documentary on Hulu mm. and it's a lot of painting. It's a lot of like, I don't know. It didn't seem exactly journalistic. I'll it's say that. Not, it, this is a guy that is a journalist trying to go figure out, like yeah. just meet Q or get as close. And so he talks to the the uh, the two dudes who run HN. Right. One of the Philippines, one of Japan. Yeah. 
it's just kind of like, I don't know. Maybe I'm just being a dick, but. Rabbit it, Hole on New York Times podcast was very good. Okay. It's kind of about QAnon, but it's about a bunch of shit. I that I wouldn't mind listening to it as a podcast, yeah. but it, it feels a little bit hyping up. Just the, I don't want to hype these people up. I don't yeah. want, and it's like mystery, like, oh, and then I finally no, got yeah. a call back from. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then it shows, you know, it's a jump cut to him yeah. being like, hey, is my mic yeah. on? And yeah. then, oh, yeah. it's a teaser. We're going to interview him next. Right. I, don't, I don't know. I didn't. Yeah, I get it. I mean, I that's, that's, that. you got to be careful, guys. What? what? About these documentaries. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anyhow, well, let's go on to the email section. Oh, my it's God. time to check that email. <laughs> Hi guys. Um, last week you discussed the horrific murders in Atlanta of several Asian women, um, and you discussed whether or not it falls under the category of uh, hate crime or bias crime. Um, I think that that is part of it because we fetishize uh, Asian women in this country, but I think the bigger issue is the stigma of sex work. So here's my question. Do you think society will start normalizing the sex industry anytime soon? It seems like a no-brainer to me to decriminalize that type of work would give people legal protections and protection from violent psychopaths. So how do you feel? Und was denkst du darüber, Bianca? Tschüss. Oh. Hallochen, meine Liebe. Wie geht's dir? Danke für deine Frage. Just a couple orcs hanging out. <laughs> Silly. Um, I don't know if it will spare them violence. I don't know. I just don't. I think a lot of it has to do with the religious oppression. So that's where the church going down thing is good. Right. That's one of the areas where it's good. But there's, there's plenty of upside to yeah. Um, I, if weed is analogous, seems positive. I, I think weed, weed being the, uh, like a bugaboo for a hundred years and like, it's weak, we legalize weed. Are you fucking crazy? Right. It's like, there's a saying like things happen slowly and then all at once. That's how, thank you. Um, that's how it feels like. With weed, where it's yeah. just like New York seemed like, oh, it's legal. Like they just turned a switch. And yeah. You're like, wait, what? No pro, no, no PSAs. No, no nothing against it. It's, it's legal, just... and it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Um, God, most of this country is. It'll be fine. I promise. Yeah, it'll be okay. Right, but the on. reason they don't is because church groups and yeah. government groups uh, and parent moms for against whatever make stigmatize it before you could you even can have an opinion about mm. it and then if you have a negative opinion about it, then you're against kids right uh so i hope sex work is legalized it's it's i don't think it helps being underground no but if you go to certain countries where it is legal they have you know there's no need for a pimp there's no need yeah. for so the, a lot of the other elements that go along with it, it's regulated. It's yeah. um, you get tested regularly. You get tested, yeah, and you know, no one stiffs you. You know, it's it's just like any business transaction. Yeah, and we're it, it's all al it's always going to happen. Yeah. So why not? I think there'd be less room for, uh, just the. It seems like there should be like a Yelp. For no, both ways, no, no. a two way oh yell. God, no. Can you imagine? I'm, yeah. Her pussy was loose. Right, like, yeah. No, thank you. Uh, that's the headline. Pussy was <laughs> loose. Um, it's, it's a shame. My biggest regret is that can't be the title of the episode. Um, I hope, I hope, I, I, it seems like there's very little downside to legalizing it. Yeah. And I think it would uh, help the, you know, when girls are 16, 15, 16, 17 doing it. I'm not saying, you know, just wait till you're 18, but at least it just takes away the, I don't know, maybe the. Well, you wouldn't, if there were more legal 19 year olds, I feel like then they wouldn't care about 16 year olds. Well, yeah, we'll take the edge off the, like the whole underage, an underage yeah. girl. It's like, okay, she's still a teen. I mean, it's kind of gross to 
cater to that urge of no she's still a teen technically like yeah. leave the 17 year olds alone but if you think the magazine and website probably barely legal <laughs> okay bare it's called barely legal the best so stupid so stupid goodbye You've got mail. Dear Neil and Bianca, so I'm essentially the last guy in my group of peers who isn't a, in a long-term relationship or married. At this point, we're all in our mid-30s, and I'm the only holdout for bachelordom. I'm feeling pressure from friends and family to settle down. The thing is, it's not something I'm really opposed to. I'm actually a very romantic person, and I like being in close, affectionate relationships. The problem is that I'm vain and somewhat of a bastard. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, I'm not an unattractive guy. I'm... Not really a catch either, but I'm charming, funny, smart, and not entirely broke. I've been with many women who are far more attractive than I am, and I think it kind of spoiled me. The older I've gotten, I've just developed a very strong sense of what I want from a person. Trouble is that there just seems to be a very narrow overlap between the people who I'm attracted to and who are attracted to me. Hmm. Also, I like being alone, so I have no urgency to really continuously put myself out there to find this rare person. Could be in a relationship tomorrow if I wanted but not with the person I wanted, if that makes sense. And I and uh, uh, I don't know. I'm just beginning to wonder if I might be too picky or too vain. Mind you, I'm not insulting. I'm not insisting that I date a model. I just want someone that I'm deeply attracted to. This is, a, this this is, is a, a you issue, kind of, no? It's a, I think it's a guy... Uh, it's a guy issue in that... It's a guy issue that people don't really talk about. Because okay. it's like, fuck you, you're a sex addict. Okay. Um, okay, well, like you're a, I, I had this argument with, with somebody yesterday. Okay. If if I told you uh, I want to set you up with my friend. Yeah. And you said, what's he like? Mm -hmm. And I said, he's 33, comedian, is okay with money, decent looking, and... Uh, has lives by himself directs commercials you'd be like i'm listening and if i said same shit he's 47 you're like e. yeah I, that's it that's it just I mean, yeah i mean i don't I, I know that it doesn't mean it's like i would think i mean i just would i don't know if i'd want to date a 33 year old to be perfectly honest i hear you for other reasons because yeah. men are just yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, funny yeah. at certain ages yeah. And then 47 might it's be like... It's a cursed age. It's like okay. you're still kind of... That's playing. what I'm saying. Like, but then 47 is a, it's a, it's a old. Yeah. So I don't know. I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> Neil is old. Man. Um, so I'm not Are asking... Are you 47? Apparently. Uh, so I'm not asking what? for for special... It's just a it's just a delicate situation. I'm not I'm not even looking for sympathy really. I'm just looking for like, you know, peep wives don't like having me around. <laughs> like wives You're the troublemaker universally like, wives don't like I'm having me around. Ass, yeah. And then the person I was arguing with was like, cause that's their place they can exercise power. If like their husband's a rich guy who's successful and popular mm. and he brings her around it's like, well, yeah, then she can be like, fuck that guy. Um, but it's married guy. Oh, mm. it just, it's, it's a, there is a moral judgment that comes with it yeah. when not enough of it is about like luck. And, and I would even go so far as this, I, I'll take it a step further. Uh, if you say you, Neil, you've never been married, you must be a little fucked up. And to which I say, maybe what should I do? <laughs> what should I do now? I go to therapy. Okay. I, I I drink plant medicine. Ah, I, I hasn't. I haven't fallen in love with anybody in a while. And the ones people I did fall in love with, it didn't work. So, like, yeah. what do you want me to do? So, I'm glad that I brought the podcast to a standstill. No, no, I'm just listening because I don't know if if you. I, I just feel like there's not. Everyone can give your advice, give you advice because we all want to see, for some reason, everyone wants to see a successful guy together with somebody. Yeah, like it politics, you can't be a single. I mean, you can't you can't be sing, really single in politics anyway. But you want it's like that's some good seed. Mm. 
<laughs> if that's what you mean, like they, you want to see a successful guy in a relationship. Just with we Mary. want you. Like, why are you dating so much? Yeah. Um, so I think people like the narrative is, well, why? What's okay? He doesn't have a girl. Why? Yeah. What's going on with Neil? Yeah. Is he messed up? Is he right? You know. So it's never like that's eh, very difficult to meet people in yeah. for anybody. It's very Let difficult alone. to meet healthy people. Healthy, on the, same the right page. people that are in the right vibe that are the da, 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 like the as I say, there's fifty fucking prongs that need to line mm. up. Yeah, fifty prongs. One's real important, <laughs> and it's prongs. in my pants. Um, oh, so <laughs> don't say that. You're gonna. You just lost me some women. <laughs> um, Bianca, I had. There were so many women that were interested, <laughs> and once you said "ooh." Um, <laughs> Uh, so I, again, and the other thing that bugs me is that if I was a woman, I'd be a heroine. I'd um, be a heroine I mean, or I'd be like a feminist icon no, or come, no, come on. People tell women all the time. Why didn't you have a man? Of course. But what? at least if they, if there's an article about them in Allure, it's she's feminine, 50 and fierce or whatever. I know, one of those but those things. women aren't also always happy. Of course. Well, but sometimes they are. That's sometimes what I'm. They are, and you are too. I. That's what I'm saying. Like, and then even that, people go, "What? What's wrong with you that you're happy mm. being? You know, Sarah Silverman's a little older than me, single, never been married, and I think uh, she's not sad about it. No, she's not sad at all about it. But if they write an article about either one of us, they're gonna use hers as like positive she didn't fucking settle she didn't she didn't settle for any for just anyone right. she's still holding out poll quote i just want to meet the right guy mm -mm. poll quote's a big one like they'll have and she'll be in a wedding dress and whatever in the in this fake article <laughs> right it's just it's just aggravating as a it i it's like a media thing it's like right it's like why is every you know x person in x pose do people try to do your like no. well-off friends try to set you no why <laughs> are you open to it or have of you course, said do but not it's not a matter of my well-off friends <laughs> or any friends i just mean you know because i think they think i'm a fucking psycho <laughs> it's the truth. like i will not do that to I, my it's friend. like that's again all the things and he's 33 or 4 <laughs> Or but, yeah. and he's never been married. Is that joke I do? I'd get more credit <laughs> from women if I'd been married and murdered my wife than having never been married. The problem is, I would set you. I have friends I could set you up with, but you're a little too much of a truth teller. And you don't. You. <laughs> yeah. I just feel like sometimes when you tell me your stories, I'm glad I don't know these women. That's funny. <laughs> like you're not as healthy as I thought you were. Yep. Sorry, that's buddy. One of my great. Sorry, guys, buddy. Guys, that's I said. So you're not, not as healthy as I, <laughs> as I thought you were to a woman I was dating. People think it was a diss. I just think it's what's popping. Imagine if she came. She's like, you know what he told me? She could like, have said that uh, to me. I know, but it's like selling your friend a car, a used car. She once said, same girl once said, did you meditate today? Because I was being a dick. She goes, did you meditate today? And I go, yeah. And she goes, did you do it right? That's like, are you on your period for mental, yes. uh, uh, mental health? But did you do it right? Aware people. Very funny. And did I immediately right? say again. I do, did you do it right? It's funny. Yeah. Was she mad at uh, you're not as healthy? She cried, I believe. Yeah. Thereby proving my point. That she, she's not, she wasn't healthy. She <laughs> I had to finish that joke for Bianca. I thought she would get it just from like, the setup, but I had to give her the punch. Goodbye. Back. You faithful mail. listener, second time emailer, brief reaction to stop Asian hate hashtag discussion. Bianca said, I don't think this is bad. Dot, dot, dot. It doesn't hurt you to clarify your stance on things. Even if it's cheesy hashtag thing, it doesn't hurt. Okay. Personal hypothesis. It does hurt. Here's how it hurts. It gives us the feeling of fighting injustice and blinds us to the fact that we're not actually doing anything effective in the real world to affect change. Uh, before the hashtag activism era, era you could be enraged by injustice, but you had a pretty fair barometer for your effectiveness. You either did something about it or you didn't. If you didn't do anything about it, you felt impotent or hypocritical or lazy, whatever. Uh, but you didn't get the dopamine hit that being altruistic gives us. See the three mics comment about volunteering to fight depression. Hashtag activism is bad because it gives us the illusion of having done something and rewards us with the dopamine hit and gives our brain permission to think, quote, I've done my part. It's worse than doing nothing because when you do nothing, at least 
you know, you've done nothing. You don't get to feel good about it. James Joyce wrote, quote, sentimentality is unearned emotion. I think hashtag activism is unearned virtue. It's dopamine heist. He goes on, but yeah. he's not wrong. Um, well, it the only in my defense, I said so much that was against that one line. No, no, I don't think that you were saying like it's. I I think that you were fine with making it a hashtag as a part of a panoply of things. No, I my think the, when I said that line, it was after we talked about it, and I said, but then when I think about it, if you are just you don't know what to do it doesn't hurt to maybe use your platform to spread awareness i think he, i agree with him completely right but i also said so much more which was the hashtag doesn't explain anything uh -huh. just posting a hashtag and i feel like people thought it would have the same impact as black lives matter and it didn't it was just stop asian hate we don't know what you're talking about we don't know what like the, it was so yeah. vague that it felt like people thought they could be like, stop Asian hate, close laptop. I right. did it, which is the same thing he's saying. Yeah. It, it's not. So I was saying the same thing, but then I thought about it on the other hand and some accounts I follow who did post it. There were some people who did a really good job and I don't think it hurt. I don't think that like I was thinking of specific accounts that posted a lot of information mm -hmm. along with stop Asian hate that you know, if I showed it to you, no one could argue that I was. But bad. I don't think you know I saying? don't even think I don't think that's bad. I just don't think it's effective. Like I, you know, I, I don't. Didn't argue I can still because that's the. It's like people mistake good with effective. It's like it's good. It's emotionally good. It's unearned. Yeah, um, I definitely didn't say it was effective. I, I, I know it's not about me. I'm just saying. Heist. I fully agree with him, and I think we covered it so much. We talked about that for a long ass time. Yeah. So. To take the last bit and say, like, I was a fully agreeing with this guy yeah. the whole time. So, you know, I get it. But I'm going to start a hashtag called call the cops. <laughs> I think it already exists. <laughs> and I'm going to have them have a number. Thank you, 911. I'm toying with some numbers. One of them is 911. Um, you know, it's funny when you're in another country and they and their 911 is different. They'll yeah. be like, dial eight. And you're like, eight? <laughs> It doesn't even make sense. Eight. <laughs> That's when that joke, what's the number to 911, actually makes sense. Yeah. You know what? You know what? You know what? Thank you, 90s, for what's the number <laughs> to 911. Thank you, little rascals. Goodbye. Thank you. You've got uh, Hi, Pinky in the Brain. Not bad. I was curious Very on your good. thoughts about how power dynamics play out in media and its translation to real life. A lot of TV shows about teenagers nowadays often have adult actors with fully formed bodies playing a 17, 16, or even 13-year-olds. Uh, Sydney Sweeney in Euphoria... That weird pen 15, 15 show. That's so funny. Pretty Little Liars. Uh, do you think it plays a role in the insecurities of teenage girls or even the further sexualization of girls? Also, I recently wrote a paper. Oh, boy. Here we go. Oh, no. It's always, This was a classic. It was a bait and switch. Yep. It, we just got served. <laughs> we literally just got. You saw it happen live, folks. Wow. It doesn't happen Neil often. Walked, we walked got right. served. Um, one of the quotes I found interesting in your own paper was... <laughs> Quote, pornographic media, even softcore media, is about sexual initiation of boys and uh, we're in, in, invariably to work, invariably the work of grown men revisiting and refashioning their teenage years, seeing their exploits in a more favorable light. To what extent do you agree with this statement? Do you believe that an artist who is displaying more sexual images can assume that their audience has fully capable, full capabilities to process the weight of the images, they say? Uh, that's a whole... <laughs> Same. I don't think it's the artist's fault, and if you do, then you get better go burn uh, Taxi Driver and Catcher in the Rye because they got John Lennon, Jody, uh, John Lennon and Ronald Reagan shot, and the yeah. authors blamed that. So they couldn't. How do we know who can take what? Right. And I don't think it's up to the artist to to censor themselves on that regard. The thing about teenage girls. I've never been a teenage girl. Looks like a nightmare. No, Neil, they're saying that they, we, like in Hollywood, we cast um, underage girls, overage young looking girls, right. which is normal. Well, yeah, because it's, it's they like have we, to be able to work. Yeah, they have so many 
They would love, listen, on Disney, the reason why people go to Nickelodeon and Disney, obviously you can attest to that, is because they have a whole system. They have yeah. school there. They have yeah. all the things. Kids can almost barely work in Hollywood. Yeah. Well, that's a limited time. And mm -hmm. then also, you don't want a kid growing on camera. Right. It's gross. <laughs> it's gross. If you don't believe me, ask. watch a sitcom in its eighth season. I know. And then and remember how Stephon adorable Timmy... Kill. Remember how adorable Timmy was? Well, he's got cystic acne now, and he's hulking. Um, so he, so be careful what you wish for, Goodbye. guys. Goodbye. You've got Hello, mail. Nebin. Congratulations on your 100th episode. Quite a milestone. Not really. As a listener since day one, I started to do some calculations, all right? Let's say every two hours of listening all is equal to four hours in real life. Uh, interactive exchange with friends and family. Most of us spend... Still spend more time with you two uh, per week, making you guys somewhat like family. Um, whatever uh, we agree or not with them, your unique perspectives and humor have shaped us over the last two years and incredibly influenced how we see the world, indirectly influenced uh, how we see the world, interact with people at home, at the job, and et cetera, and using old man phrases. <laughs> My question one, do you two devoutly consume any podcast or media on a regular basis like the feeliest of feelers do? Over the 100 episodes, what are the biggest sacrifices you've made in service of the show? Preparation, content, regularity, etc. 100th Neil Spiel, Century Bunny Tunny. Truly Whoa. have no idea what they're talking Whoa. about. Whoa. Uh, Whoa. Um, do you do anything special? Do, I'm we both think. keep a list. We have our list. Week. There, so little preparation goes into this. Yeah, it's not like well researched. No, we just put a list together of what we want to talk about. Yeah, and then we'll just like throughout the week text each other interesting shit. Yeah, uh, um, it's a so yes, it's a huge sacrifice. A sacrifice. So to every answer day. your question, sir, every day. we're we came out of the mud. <laughs> um, we got we get this podcast out the mud. Um, yeah, there's regularity is a pain in the ass, but yeah, but. You Neil know. always says it's the first, it's the, like, he hasn't had a job. I haven't had a job. He hasn't had a job. It's been a while. <laughs> so it's been a while. It. <laughs> it's been a while. Um, Goodbye. You've got Hello, mail. Spirit Padre and old Caribbean Madre. Hi. Pretty good. I'm back with another one. Back in my 20s, I was seeing a guy who was playwright musician. We lived together in a big artist collective, as as one may do in your 20s. Ew. Not in Not Ew. in the last 50 years. Um, we didn't actually quote hang out with each other long, but remained housemates. And after I called the sleeping together part off, he kept pushing boundaries like showing up in my room and crawling in my bed with me, wholly uninvited. Weird shit. I love how girls are like, that's weird. No, nothing weird about it. He just wanted to keep having sex with you. It's just after she said, Hey, I'm not interested in yep. you at all. But I live, I'm, I'll be in the room next door. And if you're get if a guy, I'm not saying it's legal or he didn't, I'm assuming he didn't force it, but a guy coming in after you've stopped wanting to sleep with him and kind of like getting in bed with you, I don't find abnormal at all. Not behavior I do, but I'm I I'm not surprised by it. it at all. Yes, yes. of course not. Um, fast forward to Nowish, and the guy has had a lot of success writing on hit TV shows in Hollywood, mm. including Singled Out <laughs> and... <laughs> What else did I write? Chappelle all show that. and all that and Saturday Night Live goods. twice. I recently Googled him and discovered he's been sacked from the last show he was on when it came to light that he punched an ex-girlfriend. When I pushed this to a mutual old housemate who was still friends with this dude, she, shush, she pushed back that there was, quote, more to the story <laughs> and that the, quote, girl accuser was crazy. Um, I said, I'm sure the girl may be crazy, but there's no point defending this dude. My friend feels bad that dude lost his career because of this. But my feeling is that the media space is brutal with no space for nuance these days. So you all sadly just need to keep your noses exceedingly clean so you don't get gut. Uh, I'm not saying put him in the electric chair. I'm saying rest in power, dummy. What do y'all think? I it's hard to spin a betting... punch to the face. Okay, fine. Right? Yeah, I don't, of course. Yeah, like that's, we agree that that's bad, right? But try him and convict him and have him do some kind of sentence. Mm. Because this same woman would probably be in favor of 
productions, uh, writer, writing rooms, hiring a, a former felon to rehabilitate himself. Right. So like, but like, no, but fuck him, but you're good. What's the difference? If that guy killed somebody or that guy punched a lady and he, but you're, you, you're never going to work again. I just think it's uh, haphazard and uh, it's, there's no system. No, there's no system. And like, well, you guys need to, okay. So we don't, there's no, there's no reparative justice. There's no, there's no justice at all if you fuck up because, because the media doesn't have nuance. Well, that doesn't mean, it doesn't sound like the media. It sounds like you don't have nuance. Um, She's in favor of not wanting them to work. Uh, there's a, so the book, some, a few people asked me about it and it's called the little book of restorative justice. Mm -hmm. and it's very Did good. you tell me about it? I told you about it. Yeah. And then, um, I mentioned it on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Uh, it basically says you can't really be in favor of cancel culture and, um, yeah. uh, criminal justice yeah. reform. And it's not hard to understand. I'd like why. to introduce you to 70 million people that are. Essentially. Yeah. I mean, even there's times I we say it like we're hypocrites too. There's times where yeah. I'm like, fuck the motherfucker. Yeah. And then I want criminal justice reform. So anyways, the books, it's really good. My friend who's a lawyer is writing a book about kind of this, and that's one of the books he's using for his research. So that's the name, Little Book of Restorative Justice. Yeah. Uh we need a system. It's fun to get to be allowed to write the rules, mm. as white people will attest. But if you were unhappy with the way that white people wrote a lot of the rules, your rewrite better be fairer mm. to everyone. And so far it hasn't been. Well, the problem is you want it. It feels bad to make it fair. Yeah. You well, want they it don't to deserve be like, it. no, no, you just, your instincts are, okay, your time. No, uh, yeah. That, it's, no, your, fucking, it's your time over the barrel. Right. It's like, it's just vengeance. It's just vengeance. It's like why countries get fucked up in mm. cultures, civilizations, et cetera. Goodbye. You've got mail. So an article the other day, quote, teens who set house on fire, killing family of five immigrants to be tried as adults. My question is, does this mean they are legally free game for pedophiles? It's a great question. What, <laughs> what he's saying is if you're tried as yeah. an adult, why can't you be tried? Why can't you no. be a sexual object as no. an adult? Uh, that's a, this guy I believe has written him before and I don't remember his name, but he's had, he's two for two with good jokes that are not useful. <laughs> um, uh, they are, but good points. <laughs> good point. What, at a certain point in comedy you get from, how can I make this good point into a joke? Right. But this is almost like Dave's logic a lot. Right. hundred percent. Yeah. That's like what... Howell's 15 and all that shit he did. That was 15 years ago, but, um, but a lot of his shit about white rules. Goodbye. You've got hey, mail. Banks. Wednesday AM listener here and haven't missed an episode. My question oh, relates nice. to how it came about that Neil decided to do a podcast with Bianca specifically. Listen to a lot of other podcasts, some with a duo of comedians or other famous people, but I have to say H&F is the only podcast that I listen to every week. Bianca's takes are great and I look forward to hearing both of your opinions in a world where there are probably too many opinions floating around. Neil, was this predicated on existing chemistry between you and Bianca that you thought would be a great podcast? Or were there considerations before her, like another comedian or possibly doing the podcast solo? Uh, the reason I'm curious is it seems the formula for most podcasts is to get someone as famous or more famous than you to partner with in order to get more listeners. And by choosing someone not so in the spotlight, you've created a more interesting podcast. Was that the plan all along? Or did it happen to turn, just turn out that way? Come on, BTS. Uh, True Hollywood story. The plan was I knew that I liked talking to Bianca. Sorry. And I liked um, I liked talking to Bianca. I liked being funny around Bianca. And I, I knew that you were intelligent. And you were from the same world nice. as me. And you were interesting. You have an opinion about things. And that's different than mine. And... I've never stopped resenting the fact that you're not famous. <laughs> it is the biggest mistake I've ever made. I could be making 1100 bucks a week off this thing that I left on the table. <laughs> uh, and also, I didn't want to do it with another comedian because I didn't want to negotiate. I, I like... I've had some partnerships with comedians. <laughs> <laughs> they can go a little sideways sometimes. Um, so I didn't... I just thought like... Even with Moshe, it was friction. 
right. just like pain in the ass. I'm a pain in the ass. He's a pain in the ass. Yeah, so you're both who wins? A pain in the ass from the same country, essentially. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. uh, um, you said to me, which I always loved, you were thinking about whatever, and you just said, I like the way we argue. Yeah. And you said, we argue in a way that isn't, it doesn't feel like right. Jerry Springer or, you yeah. know, sometimes arguments are fun to watch, but sometimes they can get old, you yeah. know? Yeah. It's just who wants to see people like really not getting along. Well, it's not, it's, it's negative. Yeah. It's negative energy. So. And we've also gotten better at, uh, not f focusing on differences. If we can tell like this is intractable <laughs> and it's going to be a know, problem. You're going to walk, we're just going to I also, I have a, I have a, uh, ayahuasca observation and, uh, ayahuasca observation. Mm. Um, <laughs> I probably thirty five percent less misogynist from doing from being ayahuasca from doing ayahuasca and being ayahuasca and being doing ayahuasca. ayahuasca. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say I did a joke with Kathy the other day that you know how it worked. She was talking about on the Bachelor, they'll have like the women don't have jobs, so they'll just have like one time there were two female twins on, and their job was twin. <laughs> So I said, when next next time I'm on TV, I'm going to have my name and then uh, just ayahuasca underneath it as my <laughs> job. Um, less misogynistic. Yeah, which... you are more open to the fact that you have a very specific experience that is not necessarily the norm. Yeah, I. I it's also I'm. I can more than I'll write jokes on ayahuasca, but more than that, I'll write setups. Like, eh, I don't like the way, like the in for that joke is fucking negative. Like I have a bunch of women jokes, right? Yes. And I just made them about how men and women don't appreciate each other. Mm -hmm. Problem solved. I still get in the misogyny. Yeah. But just, the setup, just, they don't know what it is. <laughs> just camouflage. No, it's just, it's, it's a, it's a different, it's with a different setup. It's a different point. Do you know what right. I mean? Yeah. It's just a, instead of like fucking nah, it's like ah. The setup is the is the aim. Yes. It's the it's like okay, where are the crosshairs? Yes. Boom. Same. Nice. Same, That's same why we do a podcast. Yeah. Goodbye. You got Hi, mail. Barnes and Noble. <laughs> I don't even get it. Give but this like guy it. the Tuesday. Elisani are here. I have a couple questions. Oh, Neil's gosh. take on the value of college is missing two huge points. Hmm. A colleges have different admissions requirements and associated prestige. So it's a recruiting shortcut to sift through an enormous amount of people. Okay. At 150 grand. Uh, B, although the subjects, Neil's quote facts, may be the same, these students and to a lesser extent, the teachers are not the same. Uh, I don't. Uh, okay. That's where I get into like, how bad are the small college That's teachers? That's the problem. You can find. Are they going like, where did I, where are my books? Ah, I can't find my chalk. I'm going to pee on the, I'm going to use my poop on the wall, on my whiteboard. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, in my, I have, I had so many great professors that, I mean, one of my professors wrote three books that were like uh, taught in other universities in the, you know, 80s or something that he hitchhiked with Martin Luther King in Hawaii. It's illegal. Martin Luther King <laughs> Silly. and the mountain top. So uh, to me, I think they are older, co smaller colleges get. He had a sign that said, I have a dream that you'll get us to Manalani. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, like I think they just get older. Like they were heavy hitters in the 80s, you know? I don't think they're getting unqualified yeah, I don't, teachers. Uh, but I don't know. But this is the, the thing we argued before. I don't know what qualify. Even I know, I know uh, all the people I know. Some very well. Some kind of well. Some that doesn't make me the best explainer of Dave, for instance. Like right. I'm clearly enti uh, qualified to speak about him. But I don't, maybe the things I know about them aren't even teachable right. or not valuable or not, I'm not, a, I am, the problem is I am like a student scholar. So yeah. that's, it's not a good example, but, but, um, so I don't think that knowing or 
or being black makes you better at black. It just, you know what I mean? It's the same thing where it's like, I don't know what makes a good teacher. Okay. Yeah. I also think the smaller colleges, like, there's shitty teachers at good colleges. 30% just... of everything sucks. <laughs> okay. How about that? It's perfect. Goodbye. Um, just off the top. Hire 100 people, 30 of them suck. You've got mail. Active Tuesday listener here. I am a male, nice. slightly off white Latinx with no Ooh. known Afro roots. Darn it. Recently, I bought a dashiki. Oh, no. <laughs> just to see what it would feel like to wear. And I got to say, it's the most fun, colorful, and comfortable <laughs> garment in my otherwise conventional wardrobe. But I feel like if I dared step outside when sl when wearing it, I'd be committing a huge cultural appropriation party foul. Am I correct? On a scale of one to Dolezal, where does a non-black person wearing a dashiki fall? Is it even okay to wear this thing around the house where no one else will see it? Or should I give it up entirely? Uh, looking especially to Bankerton for advice on this one. Scale one to Dolezal. I, I don't, first of all, I don't think Dolezal is a 10. No. But that's my she, own, he, that, that's it's my a, own biases. It might be a little Chet. might be a little Chet Hanks. Yeah. But again, that's mild. Really? Yeah. I mean, I, it's like F.W. de Klerk would be the would be number 10. <laughs> he brought out F.W. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I just mean it's it's it is mild. Yeah, it's mild now. In the right neighborhoods. The, There's right and wrong neighborhoods to wear your daishiki, sir. I don't think there's a right neighborhood for a non-white person to wear a dashiki. I don't know. I feel like if you're in a real hippy-dippy, like. I think even if you're in a hippy-dippy neighborhood, I think if black people see you wearing it, they think you're like. Well, hippy-dippy mostly means not black. Right. But I'm saying UPS driver. <laughs> Just driving through. Okay. The hippy dippies have packages. Or, UBS, or entrepreneur or, right, walking but, through. Right, or you, but I'm just saying like a guy that you're likely to see. Right. right? He's going to be like. Okay. Be like, right. I don't even know if it's. I don't know what the feeling is. <laughs> um, That's not really a dashiki. That's a dashiki. Is it really? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. Um, But I don't. I know. think the right color dashiki doesn't seem uh like a a transgression. Then I there's like know. the Kente cloth, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer thing, which God bless. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, the daishiki, I don't know. Just wear it inside and don't wear it outside. Wear it to bed. Wear it to bed. That feels disrespectful, but. No, no, wear it to, wear it, do whatever you want. Night shirt, your, just don't answer the door. Don't go outside with the daishiki, Don't answer the door. Please, just look on my the nest. white passing Latinx. <laughs> And see who's there. <laughs> hey, Neil and Big, shout out to some of my favorite people on my favorite show, podcast. Anyway, Neil, I'm listening to the cat as I write this email. I'm listening to you saying that you don't know what to do or know nothing about violence or what not about Asians, against Asians. One okay. thing I, to quit saying shit is fun. Oh, I like this email. Okay. One thing to quit saying shit is funny. This isn't the only time you distastefully said that someone's death or tragedy is funny. Hard to think someone with your intelligence not aware of the history of violence against Asians in America. Just concerned because the pod is a favorite. I'm a Thursday listener viewer, and I hate to see in my Google News feed that you guys got canceled at your platform with some reckless shit you say. I think you're very funny and quick and smart. I didn't know you can stay the funniest without risk. Whatever. Um, so you are you don't like it when I say that death is funny, but you do like it when I made slavery sketches. Somehow that's very funny to him. How about, again, Rick James, a sexual uh, convict, convicted sexual predator. How about virulent racism in the Ku Klux Klan? No problem with that. My point is, sir, that you don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. That you think you just go, I don't like that. So that's no, I, it's all fair game. I say this on behalf of all comedians all the time. Everything's fair game if we can land the joke. And a lot of times, I've been able to land jokes about slavery in my act, about but all kinds of shit. Right. So, well, I don't like you saying that, 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 that. You got no point. Well, it's basically picking and choosing one. Yeah, no be. standard. Just like, I don't like that. But you don't, but you, there's plenty of shit you have no problem with that somebody else could find offensive. But... 
you just have your little pet issue. Also, the point of the podcast, my friend, and, you know, I'm sure you're a feeler, but the point is that we can't always talk freely without fear of getting canceled. Right. And so we want to have an open discussion. That's why people literally call us for race and dating advice yeah. because it's such a hot topic button. I mean, it's such a hot topic that we don't know. People do not know which way to move. Right. People do not know. We've had emails that are so minor right. and huge in between when it comes to race and men and female relationships yeah. and how to do what, is this okay, is this not okay? We that we are the place where you. This guy had no you. problem with the N word family. He had no, not one issue with You're it. Still Watched annoyed. it fifty times. <laughs> That's the thing. So it's not about. For you instance, know. or my last day of slavery joke, or right, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. It's right. basically my Ray Rice joke. This is the place where we come to be um, imperfect, just like everyone else. Is. Right. So, and I get it. Hey, you know what? Guess what? This guy's also being a hypocrite. Yeah. Welcome to the But club. he he emailed it. He wrote it down wow. without we seeing the logical fallacy, <laughs> which guys, if you're going to listen, we need you to check yourself for logical fallacies. You may have already tested positive <laughs> for logical fallacies and you don't even know it. <laughs> Bianca, Mild to severe. Last time Relax I checked. Surprise. Uh, we didn't have to take this shit. We don't. Nobody, guess what, listeners? You don't either. No, you don't. It's over. Really Go don't. back to your life, which will now be worse because we're not <laughs> talking in your face. Goodbye. Good one, Neil. How'd you get it? How'd you know? Good one.